All right. Hello, everybody. Okay. Now, what we're doing today, right, mainly is uh, about your midterm revisions uh, because um, I suppose a lot of people need it, right? Your exam are, are, are around August, I suppose. So I think it's a very good revision for you lah, in case you, you kind of need your exam. Okay. Okay. We start with step one first. All right. So uh, the goal is to finish a set or two la, okay. The mainly I wanted to finish up like you know if we could, we could uh, I wanted to do two sets But I think uh, logically thinking, chances are you probably gonna finish one set plus another half of set two la, Okay. So um in this set here, I prepared basically in total of uh three sets for you. Okay. So definitely we're not gonna be able to finish every single set, but um I try my best to finish all of them la, Okay. So we start from set one, of course, right? Okay, now, uh, what I do, right, you see, uh, the questions here, right, I basically follow the format, uh, as in, like, your, your exam, as in your paper two format, uh, okay? So, it goes like this. You got your section A, section B, section C. Even the question itself, uh, okay? Even the question itself uh, actually is, uh, um, no, I did say this is the midterm revision kit. Posted in Google Classroom 1. Yes, you're supposed to have it. All right, probably you don't know. Or, you know, you probably don't even care reading the, the message but it's inside, okay? If you don't have it, then then find out yourself, right? Suppose inside, everybody got it. Why you, why you don't have it? Why not? Uh, unless you know from Google Classroom, okay? Now, section ABC, three different set here. So what we do here, right? Basically, uh, the question, it, it, it's really like your proper exam format one. Like, you know, some questions are easier, some questions are harder. So we go the same thing anyway, all right? So uh, we start from this one and any questions, you know, don't hesitate to ask. It's very good. Uh, opportunity for you to ask and learn. Okay, now come. Diagram one shows a car moving 800, sorry, 800 kg, moving from Alastar to Butterworth. We are via Gurun along the North South Highway. Uh, none of this you have to know. All right, it's physics, not geography. Relax. Distance between Alastar and Butterworth is 100 km. Uh, at first, they drive with an average speed of 100 km per hour from Alastar to Gurun in 0 0.5 hours. And then after that, stop for rest. 15 minutes after that, continue his journey from Gurun to Butterworth with an average speed of 90 km per hour in another 0 0.5 hours. Based on the information, classify all the class, uh, physical quantity involved in two groups as stated in table one. Now, of all the things you mentioned so far, all right, basically what they want you to do, very simple, categorize them, classify them into two different groups. Now, uh, it's a very basic thing. You know, uh, when we come to chapter uh, one, the beginning part, uh, is, as I said, your paper two, right? You've got like easy questions, you've got like hard questions, right? Now, easy questions normally they come from form one, especially in first questions, right? First questions, they usually have like to ask about chapter one. It's either this kind of thing or you get like instrument questions, right? Exactly, you get like one, you, you're gonna get like instrument questions where right? uh, they give you a, a vernacular caliper, ask you take reading, those kind of things. So, question number one sometimes, uh, uh, it is easy because questions are normally straightforward, but you need to make sure you know, uh, especially what taking readings for instruments. Because um, if I say like that, uh, how many of you actually still remember how you take reading properly for your vernier caliper and micrometer switch? It's a problem, right? Especially micrometer switch, gauge, a lot of people don't know one. And then next thing what happened is you have all your you know zero errors thing. Uh, that is where you have the problems. Uh, it's little, right? Question one normally four marks only, but you know, four marks, four marks, four marks, a little bit, a little bit, then eventually your marks are gone. So that's the thing. Question number one usually are coming up from chapter one. Not necessary to be chapter one, but usually they're easy. And normally they like to put in all the instrument kind of questions. Uh, okay. Now here, we need to classify them. Now, do you remember you learned the first thing in chapter one? You got all the quantity, quantity stuff, right? Base quantity, derived quantity, right? Now the other set, it will be the scalar vector thing, right or not? Now remember base and derive or not? Recall base and derive? Uh, yes. Now base and derive, right? Simple. This one is the mother of all quantity. And then derive, it's basically the, the children, the grandchildren, the grand grand grandchildren of base quantity, right? Now, um, base quantity actually very easy one because why? Base is the Manchester. So basically, you have a fixed amount of base quantity, all right? And do you know how many base quantity do we have? In total, of how many? Uh, what else? Seven, which is what? Uh, you tell me seven, but uh, could you list down one by one or not? The, the typical one, uh, the usual one you have is what? What do you have usually? Uh, you got mass, yep. Summer, time, correct. Length, yep, two. Uh, distance, mm, yep, distance. Length, la. distance is actually length, la. okay. Temperature, yes. Um, <clears throat> number of mole, yes. Amount of uh, 
amount of substance actually. Luminous intensity, correct. Some more. What else? One, two, three, four, five, six. One more. One thing, most importantly, you forgot. Temperature here, mentioned already. Yes, look the thing around, look around you. Your Wi-Fi, your laptop, your computer, your phone uses what? Yes, without current, you cannot do anything. Exactly. So that's why all together here, right? We got seven of them. Uh, again, I mentioned um, you got mass, you got time, you got length, temperature, number of substance, which is mole, and then this is luminous intensity, and then current, electric current. Well, the beginning part of your form four, lah, okay, it's really here. Lah. And then after that, right, you start having uh, temperature in, and then you start having electric current. Number of mole and luminous intensity, uh, you don't really focus too much on physics, especially mole. This one, you focus more on chemistry. Yep. Um, luminous, luminous intensity, actually, you don't learn as well. Because uh, in chapter light, we don't mention that as well. Now, anyway, these are the seven things you have. Let's see. What do we have considered as the base quantity? Now, first thing first, you say mass, right? Uh, so this one, now I circle in red color. Lah. This is your base quantity. What else? Uh, distance also base quantity, right? Some more. What else? Time also base quantity, right? Time, the, the 15 minutes, 0 0.5, same thing anyway. Okay, uh, what else? I suppose that's all, lah, right or not? Yep, this is all the thing we suppose to have, long, right? Because the rest are not, not base because uh, speed is considered as what? Derived. Okay, speed is considered as derived. So, of course, you could write down, right? Uh, your answer here would be, all right, first thing, mass, time, and then distance. Mass, time, and distance. You got three answers here, and then the other side derived simple. Uh, answer will be just uh, speed, lah, okay? You want to put speed also can, you'll put velocity also can. But normally I re re recommend writing speed. Lah. Okay? Because they mentioned speed. So you copy C. Next one. Um, easy question, I go faster. If you've got any problem, please ask. Okay? Nothing to hesitate. Next one. Calculate average speed of the car in, in the entire journey. Now, one thing we always remember uh, in chapter two, right? Or not just only chapter two, like, whatever. Like, okay? Whenever you see the word average, uh, average velocity, average speed, right? You guys got one mistake on. You always like to, you know, uh, uh, do your max way. Because normally in average, I mean, when we do average for max, right? You normally do what? Uh, you're going to do like sum everything together and then divide by four. Uh, no. The idea is, for this case, uh, divide this in mind. Regardless whatever topic we're talking about. Linear motion also, uh, ticker tape also, motion graph also. Whenever they ask for average speed, there's only one and only one way. Use the formula. Exactly. Average speed, right? Then simple, right? Formula is going to be total distance. And then what you do? You divide by total time. Okay, that is average speed. Now, if you want to find average velocity, simple, right? Speed, then you match with distance. Huh? So if I want velocity, what you do? Then you change it to displacement. Yep, something like that. This one you calculate yourself, okay? Total distance over total time. Let's see what you have. Um, the distance between Alostar to Butterworth is 100 km. And then what's the time taken? Um, 0 0.5 hours, and then 15 minutes, and then another 0 0.5 hours. So you sum everything together. Lah. Now make sure one thing very important is, um, now, always, right, the safest thing to do is what? Always put them in SI unit. Yes. Well, you see, can I convert them to hours because they do like 0 0.5 hours, 0 0.5 hours, and then 15 minutes, right? We, you could, but again, uh, to be very safe, right? Because um, again, KM per hour is not wrong, but to be very safe, you want to make sure your exam, your teacher confirm the minus one, you put SI unit. Yes. SI unit means what? Meter per seconds. You got multiple of doing it. You could either do like, you know, uh, uh, convert in terms of, you change it to distance. Okay, you, you calculate first in terms of km per hour, then convert back also can. Okay, now I teach you this way. Because uh, I prefer this way. So what you do, right? You see what I do, uh, total distance, I put 100 km. Okay, divide by total time taken, right? 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5. 15 minutes is what? 15 minutes is actually 0 0.25 hour. Am I right? Am I right? Now, 15 minutes, one hour got 60 minutes, am I right? So this one, uh, it will end up become one over four. That's why there's 0 0.25. Okay, uh? so down here, it's hour. Up here, it's km. So it will be 100 km divided by 1.25 hours. How much do we get? How much do we get? Uh, 80 km per hour, is it? How many calculate? I got no calculator. I got no calculator. Can I use, to, uh, can I write? This sorry, can I write length instead for the one? No, I recommend you write distance because the question says distance. Okay, uh -huh. now once you got to here, you say, Hey, can I? Uh, I want to be safe. Can I do me uh, meter per second instead? Yep, you could actually calculate first, 
Then final, finally, right? Here, you only convert back again. Okay, at this point, you only convert this back to meter per second. Now, you know how? Well, you see, from five already, they don't, they don't give marks for your working one. So you don't have to go and convert yourself one. The best way to do one is so simple. Use your calculator. Yes, use your calculator. Uh, I suppose every calculator behind got cover. Yes, how often you look at this? Yep. Now, if you're using the old model one, this one, all right, this one, then uh, your, your convert will be shift constant. And then if you're using the higher version one, as in the silver color one, 570 EX or ES, two of them, uh, all right, both of them also, what you do, very simple, you put them into uh, uh, shift set, I think shift seven or shift eight one on top. Shift eight, right? Uh -huh. Now, to convert km per hour to meter per second, your code is 19. So 80 km per hour. All right, what you do are uh, you press calculator 80 and then shift. All right, now, if you are doing MS, 570 MS, right, then it will be shift, uh, shift constant on your upper right. Shift constant and then digit one line. Okay, if you do 570 EX or ES, then this is going to be shift constant. I was like, shift eight, and then after that, also same thing, 19. Understand? Ah, so this is the concept. So far, so good? Clear. Any questions about to ask? Oh, yeah. Hold on, now. let me do something. Okay. Anything to ask? Okay. Huh? Now, by the way, what do we get? When you do this, 80 shift convert 19, you get 22.2222222 meter per second. There you go. Okay. Hmm. See, it. got it. Okay. Hmm. Now, I teach you one, one last, 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 last result. Okay. Let's say, lah, you say, hey, but I'm not using scientific calculator, how? Right? I'm using the 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 the, the AMA calculator, you know, the copy time auntie needs to calculate how much my copy costs one and then how. Right now, I can teach you one last. This is last resort uh, because why? I always recommend one make use of the technology. You spend so many money buying this. Why? Uh, why? Why? You know this is this right? Why? I uh, use this, but of course, uh, if you say really, really, I forgot. Then how? Now you got one more way is you remember one magic number. The magic number is three point six. Yes. Now to convert from km per hour to meter per second, you divide by three point six. Two. You take 80, you try, take 80, divide by 3.6, you get exactly same answer anyway. And then to convert uh, meter per second to km power, you multiply 3.6. Okay? Must convert, uh, I would recommend you convert, uh, because normally when the question didn't say what unit they want, right, it's always safer to put them in SI unit, which is meter per second. Uh, unless the, same, the question say, like, you know, I want km power, uh, then it's fine, you can leave it here, totally same, no, no, nothing wrong, all right? Uh, that's why. Okay? All right, everybody got this, uh, Ken? I need to go on already. There's some um, straightforward questions. Move on next. The more we can do, the less we need to do at home. Next one, number two, diagram two shows a water supply system. Water level is high in reservoir, in fact, along the pipe to houses at lower levels. Why is it necessary for the water pump to be fitted to the multiple story? Well, this one, why do you put pump at the multi story kind of building, which is your condominium, like actually? Uh, you notice we got pump, right? Why pump? Because there's one simple problem, uh, right? Your pressure not enough. Uh. I mean, you normally listen to your parents say also, uh, right? Uh, why the water so small? The pressure not big enough. Now, the reason very simple, because uh, your water from here, they flow, 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 come over. Now, they have to go against gravity. You realize that? They have to fight against gravity one to go upwards because gravity pull you down. Uh. Uh, that's why. And, and the fact is what? Your water come out from here. So actually, uh, the pressure only enough to push it up to the same level only. So you want it to go up here. This is the part where you know you're gonna have problem with. You understand the point? That's why. Why need pump? Simple. To exactly. So to what? Ensure to make sure uh, to pump. Okay. Or you can say to ensure the water flow up to higher places faster. Okay. Or you can say have higher pressure to push the water up to higher places also can. Yes, to have higher pressure, to push the water up higher places, okay? To move the water up also can, to push the water up also can, okay? To increase water pressure, to supply water to higher level, correct, can. Ensure pressure, uh, to ensure higher pressure, pushes, you must say push the water, must mention until the water. Yes, pushes the water to, to higher level. Yep, okay? 
Next one, pressure of water at point A, if the height is 100 meter. Now point A, it's uh, actually here, uh, the lowest point, the, the question didn't mention so far, okay? This question is already in Google Classroom. Yes, I, I posted like, I think two or three weeks ago. Yes, uh, those who ask me then confirm you never read message one, exactly. Now, pressure, how? 100 meter, what you do? And, and, and some more, uh, if you are online students, right, you receive the notes actually. Yes, because I was thinking, confirm what people are not going to be able to, like, you know, print out, uh, print out for everybody. Uh. Uh -huh. But then, if you're physical class students, then you need to get in next week. But I already give it a long, long time ago. The point is, I give it a long, long time ago. Yes. Now, pressure. How do we calculate pressure, by the way? Uh, pressure of water. Well, water means liquid pressure, lah, right? We got, we got three types of pressure anyway. We got liquid pressure, we got solid pressure, we got gas pressure. Okay. Now, solid pressure. FOA, that one is the most fundamental formula, force over area. Now, this one is to calculate liquid H rho G, okay? Equals to what? H rho G equals to what? The height, of course. Now, actually, uh, I need to remind you one simple thing. Uh. You know what does this H stands for? You know what does this H stands for? Yep. Now, to be exact, right, H don't stand for height, actually. Yes, to measure pressure of water, right, actually H here, it actually means that, correct? But well, you're already at the bottom part, then that one is your depth, that one is your depth and also your height, same thing anyway, because it's all the water here pushing all the way down. So this whole thing, 100, then 100, simple. Okay. Uh, density of water, did they give or not? Oh, they didn't give you. But uh, my right should give, I uh, don't need to memorize one. Density for water is 1,000. Yes, density for water is 1,000. This one should be given, no need to memorize, relax. Okay. I mean, so many things to memorize, man, no, nah. But normally, like, if I were you, right, I would remember a few famous ones. Usually in this pressure chapter, right, pressure chapters usually ask two liquid only, like water and then mercury. Density for water is 1,000. Mercury, right, it's 13,600. 13,600. Uh, you could do that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, gravity. Uh, your syllabus, you do 9.81 already. Uh, remember this. Uh, answer. 9.81 multiplied by 100 multiplied 1,000. 9810000 zero, 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 Pascal. You want to convert to SI, you, you want to convert to standard form, also can. You don't want also can. Right, leave it to you. Lah. If you want, you can convert, then become 9.81. No? Like instead of 5 Pascal. Not a must. Not a must. You want to be safe, you do it. Lah. Yeah. When number gets too big, lah, you know, when you start having like five digits or whatever, nah, then you start to convert standard form. Okay. And, and you have to make sure one thing also, if the number behind is all messy, one, uh, you get like 9815270. Uh, uh, that one I don't recommend converting. Because when you switch to standard form, right, you round off too many. Really. Uh -huh. This one I will because why? This answer and this answer makes no difference. Uh, that is the point. You get it? Uh -huh. I'm there. Moving on next. And, and no, um, do, we, we, don't, we don't use kilopascal actually. We don't use kilopascal this unit. Yes, I, I don't know where no, you, no, no, some of you were, were saying, hey, I kind of said this before. Perhaps it's seen elsewhere, lah, but for KPA, uh, physics, we don't do one. We either do PA or standard form. Okay, no KPA session. If they give you KPA, right, then convert. Yes, if they give you KPA, then convert. Right. Occupants at higher floor of the building always complain about low pressure. Give reason for the low water pressure. And why? Higher floor, what's wrong? I mean, I told you already, my right? The problem is what? Your water come out from here. So actually, uh, you measure from, you, you do it this way, right? You draw one line over, you will see a problem one. Yes, now. Pressure, right? It's always like that. You want the bigger difference, the better. Okay, you want the bigger difference, the better. So if let's say uh, the highest point to the lowest point, okay, that one will be the strongest pressure anyway. But as it goes up, you have to fight against gravity, man. And then your difference in height becomes smaller and already. So the smaller difference in height, the smaller the pressure. You see that? Exactly. So that's why, right? Higher floor, what's wrong? Because, simple, because the difference in depth difference in height, it's smaller, okay? It's smaller at higher floors of the building, all right? Therefore, the water pressure will be lower. One marks only, lah, so you managed to mention some until the you know, difference in height, smaller than uh, simple, okay? Difference in depth, not height, sorry, difference in depth. The depth, you can say the depth decreases also can, up to you, but the point is, lah, one marks on here. Now, always right, learn, learn this small trick is always read. Okay, always read to like, you know, uh, how many marks they gave you. 
If they give you one mark, then simple lah. One, 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 one point. If they give you two marks, then two points. Oh, exactly. Uh, height is low, which leads to low pressure as pressure directly follows it. Uh, no need to mention so many. And don't use the word height. Use that. Yes. Uh, diagram 2.2 shows the pressure of water transmitted equally in all directions. Name the physics principle in number of situations. La, here's a keyword. What principle tells you pressure transmitted equally in all directions? Pressure goes all directions. Yes, who says that? All right, Pascal principle. Um, now, do you recall, right, how many principles we have? We actually have three principles, right? We got Pascal, we got Archimedes, and then we got Bernoulli principle. Pascal principle, it's about the hydraulics one. Uh, you know, the hydraulic jam, uh, hydraulic jam, uh, hydraulic jack, uh, hydraulic lift. They used to amplify force one because pressure same, but your area different. That's why the force different. So normally Pascal principle, uh, you will see those, you know, hydraulic jigs, uh, uh, jacks, uh, hydraulic lift, uh, one smaller, one bigger than you. Different area, different force. Okay, then later on, right, you got Bernoulli principle, which tells you about, you know, uh, the pressure, the relationship between pressure and velocity. The higher the velocity, the lower the pressure. Okay, and then after that, you have um, Archimedes, which tells you about buoyant force. Uh, remember the formulas? V rho G. Uh, then normally that one you will mention about all the all the floating stuff, uh, hydrometer applications, uh, kind of thing. Okay. Now number three, diagram three shows two identical resistor P and Q. Identical means same, same uh, everything same. As in what resistance same uh, normally when they say so. When they say identical, they are trying to tell you that they have same resistance. Okay. M meter A two shows the current is it one point zero ampere. Okay. A two is over here. This one they say is one point zero ampere means one ampere actually. All right, now next one, name the type of transistor, sorry, connections of resistor. What kind? Well, simple, like that. Hello, and then got, got junction one. Every time you see the wire separated, every time you see a circuit, uh, they, they branch out, they got junctions. That means for sure what they're dealing with. Yep, this one will actually be uh, a, a, a parallel circuit, correct? A parallel circuit. Okay, mm, and, and this one, right, you need to be careful uh, because one thing is if uh, they put one more here, let's say out of nowhere you got a resistor R. Uh, now, if like that, then no longer parallel only, uh, they will become parallel and series. Yes, so this, of course, the normal, right? So only, only here and here, this one parallel, simple. Okay, and one thing very important is, hey, but then here go uh, how? Now, rules number one, you do not care about instruments. Instruments are not supposed to actually, you know, affect your, 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 your circuit run. So with or without instruments, they're not supposed to change the structure. Like can suddenly you put an emitter inside, it becomes serious. You put an emitter inside, it becomes parallel. It makes sense. One. So uh, better in mind, uh, emitter, voltmeter, right? They're not supposed to change the structure of the circuit. If it's a parallel, you put a voltmeter inside, it is still a parallel. If it's a series, you put an emitter or voltmeter inside, it is still a series. You get it? Mm. Now, you say parallel, my right? Now, speaking of this, do you remember the parallel relationship? We got normally two types, generally, my right, parallel circuit. Now, always uh, remember V, E, I, R, right? For parallel circuit, what are the relationships between all, all this? For parallel circuit, number one, what about the voltage out? Uh, parallel circuit, voltage is actually the same one. So let's say uh, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, they are all equal, okay? Now, what about current? Current, yes, they are, they are basically summed together. I1, I2, I3, I4. And then what about resistance? Resistance is one of the things that most important I to remind you because why? Parallel circuit, right? The formula a bit, a bit, a bit special one. Huh? You need to use one over R and then one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3 plus one plus, plus together. You get it? Okay. All right, now, and, and the reason very simple, what? you see? Current, let me ask you a very simple question. Current flow from where? Current start to come out from where? From the positive terminal to negative terminal, right? So from here, flow, 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 flow. Pass by A1. Now, what happened when we got junction? Every time you see junction means they separate. You see junctions means they separate. So some of them, they will pass by A2. Okay, some of them will continue to flow. Notice I use different color, right? Because separated already, ma. of course, different. Nah. So you flow until the point where, now again, now they meet up, right? Just now junction separate. So junction again means they will meet up. Now, one simple rule nah, to make sure whether your, your theory correct or not. Nah. How to know whether your drawing correct or not. Whatever current come out from the battery, 
the same amount must be over inside. Okay, so you must you must make sure you get you get the same color. So let's say here is blue color, whatever go back inside also must be blue color, something like that. I put different color to show you differences only lah. No need to highlight in your exam one to show you that you know here come out and then separate become I sorry A two A three and then join back together go back inside. Okay. Hmm. Now what what do we call this point? What do we call this point? The current just only come out from battery. That is actually what. Yep, that will be your total current, right? Uh, that's your total current. You see that total current. Follow. Uh -huh. Now, what about A two A three? What about A two A three? Well, separated, ma. And then the thing is what you see. You know what's mean identical, right? You know what's mean identical, right? Means what? Exactly same. Now same means what? Resistance same. Then things are easy lah, right? Literally, if they are same, then you can say the current will be same. Everything will be same anyway. All right. Now since they say this one one ampere, all right? So if they are identical, how much here? Exactly a three also one ampere. But what about a one value? What about a one value? Look, your total is a one plus a two, right? This one total total until here separate one one. So before you separate, should be two. So a one right two ampere. This one should be one ampere. No need to calculate one. Uh. You see one marks on it they give you. It's a straightforward question. They want you to understand them. The, I want, they want you to remember uh, about the relationship. Okay. Now next one. If the resistor of resistor Q is uh, 4 ohms, calculate the potential difference across Q. Right. They want the potential difference, which is what? Voltage. Uh. How do you do that? Resistance of Q is 4 ohms. This is four ohms. Well, you see, you have current, you have resistance. Can you find voltage? Easy, right? Now, chapter electricity, the most famous formula, everybody should know what, right? V equals to what? Yes, IR, everything got already, right? So the I is one ampere, the R is four ohms. Everything multiplied together, four ohms. Okay, next one, effective resistance. Remember, we mentioned this before. Um, you know what's made of effective resistance, right? If you don't know, right, make a remark for yourself. Uh, the idea of effective resistance in a simple word, uh, it means total resistance. It means total resistance. And this is it. You want to calculate resistance for parallel, must be one over R. Yep. So identical, meaning what? Q is four ohms. Then obviously P also four ohms. Uh. So what you do here, simple. One over R. One over R equals to one over four plus one over four. How much do we get? Two over four. Not done yet because why? Now always remember this is where you make mistake one. One over R. So what must you do? The ballet. So your R become what? Four over two. All right. So how much do you get? Two ohms. Get it? Hmm. Relationship between I one, I two, I three. I think we've answered already, right? I one equals to I two, I three. What do you put here? Can we put equal? Parallel circuit. I one, I two, I three. How are they same? If they are voltage, then same. If they are current, then of course not the same. This one will sum together. Okay, got it. Any questions? That's why you notice one thing, right? Uh, the few things you probably need to understand is number one is for parallel circuit, your voltage are the same. So multiple branch doesn't matter. If I say, if I found out here is four volt, that means that I can say here also four volt. And we know that the battery must be four volt as well. Okay, second thing, parallel circuit one advantage lah, is what? You see, uh, we got two four ohms resistor, but when you put them together, they only got two ohms as effective resistance. So parallel circuit advantage is the more you put inside, the lower the effective resistance. Compared to series, right? Everything summed together, four plus four is eight. Now, right, one over four, one over four is two. So in parallel circuit, right? Effective resistance, in a way, they are lower. You got it? So this is what we get. So far, so good. Ken, okay. any questions to ask? All right, next question, number four. Here, second four point one shows the reading of the thermometer uh, that is put in a beaker of boiling water. Physics concept that is used in thermometer. Physics concept. Not thermometric property, different thing. What is the physics concepts to be used? Well, you see, how do you measure the temperature actually? You put a thermometer inside, right, for what? You put the thermometer inside for what? To absorb heat, absorb heat, absorb heat, and then again, as you mentioned many times, right? Whatever object, uh, whether hot or cold, uh, you put them together, right? After a while, they achieve thermal equilibrium. 
Now, what is the what is the main thing about this thermal equilibrium? How do you consider two things in thermal equilibrium? Number one, no net heat flow. All right now, remember uh, the word net means what? There is heat flow one, just that your balance are zero. As in what? You go in, you 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 give up fifty, you take back fifty. That's number one. No net heat flow. Second thing, what else? Yes, well, uh, this is actually the main thing here. The temperature must be the same. If the temperature not same, right? Then not yet thermal equilibrium. And also one thing, a lot of you probably mentioned the two objects you want to consider thermal equilibrium, they must be in thermal contact. Thermal contact in a way like, means they are in contact and then the heat flow between them. Yes. So that is the concept we're looking for. Because why? When we achieve thermal equilibrium, when we achieve thermal equilibrium, then you know what? It's going to be same equilibrium. They will be same temperature. Uh, then you know uh, whatever the temperature is for the whatever the thermometer temperature is, they will same as the boiling water. Okay, because thermal equilibrium. Exactly. Now again, uh, you don't remember, please write down. Uh, okay. Thermal equilibrium. What is the condition again? To have thermal equilibrium. Three things. Actually, actually three things. Uh, and yes, they do ask in the exam, you know, they will ask you what is thermal equilibrium. Um, thermal equilibrium actually got no definitions. Uh. So whenever they ask what is the meaning of thermal equilibrium, simple, you list down them. Thermal equilibrium occurs when Two object, first thing first, in thermal contact. All right, and then second point. Two object in thermal equilibrium has the same temperature and no net heat flow between them. Okay, you could say zero net heat flow also, can, but no, the, the, the main point, uh, it's here. Lah. The main point is the word net. You cannot say no heat flow. There is heat flow one. Just that your balance is zero. Like you give out 50, you take back 50. Uh, that kind of thing. State two characteristics of the... Uh, there we go. We got my, we got answer here already. Literally up down there. You copy lah. Here. Two characteristics. All right. So you can say same temperature. One point. Okay. No net heat flow. One point. Okay. They want two. So just read that. One and two. Okay. Can you same same net heat flow? No, no, cannot use the word same. No, the only characteristics of the physics concept mentioned. So, what means by high BP? No la melting point don't relate lah. Okay, rate of heat flow transfer is the same. Uh, then I think they want a bit extra la, I would say. Like might as well just say this right. Uh, you you your 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 meaning is not wrong. You have the same meaning, but you know you make one big wrong like that. Be more direct uh, over answers. Okay. Explain why the temperature of the boiling remains 100, although the heat being continuous supplied by the Bunsen burner. Agam, chemistry, you learn one time, physics, you learn one time, uh, right? When we at 100 degrees Celsius, as you know, right? Definitely that's boiling point, right? What happened in boiling point? Hey, no, hey, you, this question two marks, leh. you just tell them because boiling point is 100, right? Got mark one. And, and you see, yes, boiling point is 100, then, then. They convert to gas state. Then, why the temperature not changing? Because as we know, whenever we're changing states, the temperature doesn't change, all right? Uh -huh. Now, what am I looking for? Is the keyword that you must mention. Because what? Mm, wait, this one, come on. When we change states, what, the, what is the use of the energy? We use the energy for what? When we're changing states. Exactly, there we go, there we go. Now, because the heat supplied is absorbed to do what? Now, uh, don't use brake bond, uh, not good. I say, uh, this is a very bad, I mean, I, I insist, uh, don't use brake bond. The better word to use is what? Overcome, yes. Force of attractions, okay? Force of attractions between molecules. Molecule, because it's water, so we use molecules better. Uh, Overcome force of attractions of so overcome force of attractions between molecules and what happened? Two marks, eh? How? Yes, and changed the state of. Water from liquid to 
Yes. Okay. Oh, uh, you could mention about the kinetic as well, all right? The, but the main point is I want need I need to mention about this, uh, all right? Supply between the to overcome force of attractions, and after that change states from liquid to gas form. Can I write water molecule are converted into steam and evaporate? Uh, no, you must 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 mention until this point. Absorbed to overcome force of attraction. Then later on, you only say what uh, be, uh, convert into steam and evaporate. Uh. But again, oh, I would recommend you say state become liquid and gas. Okay. Next one, normal body temperature, 37 degrees Celsius. Oh, by the way, the average kinetic energy doesn't change. Uh, in case they ask you. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. This one, you should know. Uh, changing state at the time, your average kinetic energy doesn't change. Normal body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. When the student is infected by H1N1 virus, the body rises to 42 degrees Celsius. 42, uh, 42 very dangerous already. Uh, no? Oh, it's high, high temperature, about to die already. Oh. No. Even the mercury density, as I mentioned, 13,600. Volume in the mercury is this amount. Specific heat capacity is 139 joules kg per degree Celsius. Calculate heat absorbed by the mercury. How we do that? Well, simple. First thing first, what do you do? Uh, think about this. How do you calculate heat absorbed? Uh, question number one, how do you calculate heat absorbed? Yes, Q formula, heat is always Q, all right? Now, remember how many formulas do you have for Q, right? How many formulas do you have for Q? Yes, we got two. Number one is what? Q equals to MC theta. Q equals to the other one, ML, right? Now, I want you to remember them as the same thing. Q can calculate using MC theta, can calculate using uh, ML. PT, that one is when they give you power. That one is not exactly formula for heat. It's actually power multiplied time uh, is a general formula for any energy. Power multiply time, this one uh, is the general formula for any energy actually. Usually, uh, this one is when they convert electrical to heat, then you do this. Yes. Okay. Now, MC theta, ML, two of these, remember? Well, you see, you can use, don't restrict yourself thinking, must I do MC theta? Must I do ML? No. You remember one simple rule, Sunny. You got two formulas here, am I right? How you make sure you get, uh, how you make sure you can, you know, use which one? Uh, first one here on top, right? When we do MC theta, you whenever there is change in temperature. When do we do ML? Whenever there is change in state. You follow? Okay, temperature changes, MC theta, ML then is changing in state. All right, so you say, what if uh, we got both? Then use both. Okay, calculate MC theta plus ML. So there will be cases where question will be like Q equals MC theta. Okay, Q equals ML. Or sometimes you see MC theta plus ML. It's perfectly normal. Yes, yeah, so changing temperature, use MC theta. Changing state, use ML. Change both, right? MC theta and ML. Okay. Well, here, what changing? What is changing? Only temperature changing. Hello, this is what? Body, right? What do you do? Like, the, do the, do you think the what? The student will melt? Uh? Of course, it won't be, right? So that's why there's only one way. MC theta, mass, specific capacity, theta. Now, let's see. What do we have? You, you want to find Q, right? You want to find Q, right? You must have uh, M, C, and theta, right? Do we have them? Uh, number one, theta, I suppose we got, right? Theta, we have it, right? Yep, because why? Theta is change in temperature, man. You got it? C also given to you, specific capacity of mercury. But there's one problem here. You don't have mass. Why? Because they give you the density. They give you the volume, but got no mass. Well, that's why, right? I want you to remember one thing. Uh, you use it of occasionally, one. Uh. What is the relationship? You see, when you say density, when you say volume, what come across your mind? When you see density, when you see volume, yes. Density formula is what? Yep, mass over volume, correct. Mass over volume. Well, we don't want density, man. We want mass only one. So what do you do? You only want mass. So shift the volume over and multiply. So mass equals to what? Yep. So the reason why they give you density and volume, right? It's to kind of like, you know, have an extra steps like that. Ask you to find out. Okay. Density for mercury, again, 13,600. All right, multiply volume of the thermometer inside is this one amount, all right? It's already in meter cube, so you're safe. Make sure, uh, sometimes you get tricked by this, you know. You always check the unit, kg per meter cube, so the volume must be meter cube also, all right? What do you get here? The more decimal point you keep better because this is not a final answer, uh, final answer yet. You need to substitute inside one. So better to keep everything. Yes, 0 0.5. 
0.1632 kg. Uh, then go inside here. So finally, you can calculate that, uh, right? The heat absorbed equals to 0 0.01632. Specific heat capacity, 139. Uh, that's it, because there's no what, whatever, whatsoever. Oh, by, by the way, I know uh, in chemistry, uh, you learn thermochemistry, this one, right, they give you in terms of kilo joule one. So check the unit properly. Again, physics, right, everything we do SI unit. So joules, kg. No kilo joules, uh, okay? Theta, how much? Now, bear this in mind, theta is changed in temperature. 42, 37. Quite easy, lah, right? 42 minus 37, we get 5, correct? Answer. What do we get? 11. This one you can run off when the decimal put too much because it's already final answer. 11.34 euros. 3424, is it? You can write 342. You can write 34, your choice. All right, up to you. No need to keep so many, like, final answers really. Okay? Mm -hmm. Only when you're calculating halfway, then more than small points, so you can do that. But this one finally, then that's it. Like. It's okay, you can run you can, you can, you can, you can, you can, enough. Okay? Mm -hmm. You want to write the whole thing also again. Okay? Shouldn't change the temperature. Eh? Shouldn't change in the measure be 42 minus? No. Like. Hey, hello. This is the body temperature of the person. Why do you relate room temperature? No. You are having this. And then become this. Yep. Mm. Next one. But you see, next one, question number five. Diagram five point one four point two shows a simple activity to study the behavior of gas. Uh, this one actually, right, it's a very famous experiment now for your paper three. Yes, to study the relationship between pressure and volume. Uh, to study the relationship between pressure and volume. Okay, but for one form of two, show a simple activity to study behavior of gas. Large airtight syringe is used. Air fuel balloon is placed inside. Tip is closed with one finger, and then the piston is pushed in and pulled out all the way without changing temperature. Uh, here's your keyword temperature never change. Huh? You, you will understand later why, why this is important. Okay, state one behavior of air molecule in a syringe in 5.1. What do the air behavior do? No, no, like what do the air particle do? Not properties. Behavior and properties is very different. So you cannot say compressible, it's not correct. Well, think about it. Particles. Yes. Yes, particle, what do you like to do? Moves freely, also can. Move randomly, also can. Uh, that's, the, that's the word we're looking for. They move randomly and freely. Then they, what happens next? They will collide with each other. They collide with the wall of the container and then they form pressure. Uh, yes, you can say collide with each other. Nothing wrong. You can say that as well. All right, collide with each other, move freely. I don't want to. Okay, next one, based on 5.1, Now, every time uh, in your paper two, right, there's these two particular questions. It's like a free marks to you. Why? You're going to see them asking you compare. Now, compare is the easiest question you can get because why? You don't use brain one. Use eyeball only. Look at the questions and then answer. All right? And every time, right, your paper two, question uh, five and six is the comparing part. Uh, question five and six is normally uh, where they ask you to compare. Okay? Now, next one. Uh, compare mass of air in the syringe. Well, what is the difference between mass of air? What do I do? It's the same syringe anyway. It's the same syringe, all right? And then, well, some people will, got, will have this misunderstanding, you know. You will say this one got more mass. 5.2 mass more than 5.1. Is it true? It's actually not. You know why or not? Because uh, you see the finger here, close up. So what happened is, you know what's the point of closing it, right? It's because when, no matter I squeeze the, the syringe or I pull the syringe, right? Whether I push it in or pull it out, there's no air going in and out. That's because your, your entrance is very really blocked. No air in, no air out. The air particle is the same amount. One. Exactly. Now, what is different? The fact is that this one push in. All right. Lesser volume. This one, more volume. That's it. The amount of particle inside is the same one. 
Exactly. This is one thing you get tricked sometimes. Uh, okay. So read properly. Uh, the tip is being pulled up. So that's why um, diagram. Sorry. Mass of the air in syringe in diagram. 5.1 is same as sorry, diagram. Normally, la, let me tell you what. Compare questions. Uh, your answer got a few only. La. All right. Now, you got four answers anyway. Okay. You normally got four answers when it comes to comparing. Number one is more than number two is less than and then number three is equal. Now why do I say why do I say like you know the four answer isn't it just more than equal or, or, or less than right now there are cases where you cannot compare one yeah there are situations where you can't compare both situations so what you do is you just state your observations like for example uh, they give you two diagrams diagram 5.1 shows a convex lens diagram 5.2 shows a concave lens now could you compare them what are you going to do? Like Taka, you say, oh, this one is more curved, that one is more not so curved, right? Uh, that's why. So one thing here, actually, you've got one simple way is in if, la, okay? If and only if, uh, you cannot compare. Okay, you cannot compare whether bigger, smaller, equal. Then you just write whatever your observation is. As in literally just say 5.1 is a convex lens, 5.2 is a concave lens. They are questions for that one. Yes, but here, of course, uh, you compare. Understand? Going on next, compare volume. Well, I say answer already, my right? This one got more volume. All right, this one got more volume because more space. This one got lesser volume because lesser space. Okay, now I know some of you will ask like, hey, can I just write diagram 5.1 and then mm, like that? Just put the more than or uh, less than sign. I don't recommend. Yes, you want to do that, you double confirm your school teachers. Mm. I don't recommend. So, mm, I mean, don't be lazy. Like, come on, uh, exam one time only, ma, right? So, might as well just write everything, ma, okay? And, and you know, it makes you, you know, unable to explain, explain yourself sometimes, you know. So, B, write a complete sentence, okay? Volume of air in syringe, which one more, by the way? Just now I say already, my, uh, which one more? 5.1, 4.2. .2. Which one is more volume? You look at this, uh, not back part, this one is the pistons. Yes, 5.2, more than, I. Uh, Okay. In diagram, point two is greater, larger also can than diagram point one. Now there's only one thing I ask when it comes to comparing questions. Okay, there's only one thing I ask is the fact that you know every time compare questions are. You must make sure your answer must compare. Like you, a lot of you, you got this problem, you know why? You, know? you will just say until here is wrong. What about do greater? No, not greater than what? Greater than who? Very important. You understand? Exactly. So that's why, right? Uh, um, in your answer, the, and yes, ah, uh, they minus one uh, In your answer, right? You must have two percent. Uh, must mention five point one, five point two. Must mention five point one, five point two because this is where you normally lose mark. Yes, don't be lazy. Write the whole thing. Okay. If you don't close it, the air will go inside, ma. Then there will be more air, la. Then your mass will, of course, be different one. If they block it to make sure air don't go in, go out, that's why they are safe. What happened to the pressure in the syringe when the piston is pulled backwards? Simple. Pressure of the air if the piston pull backwards off, like that, or? Now, if you if you pull the piston back, what happened is that the volume inside. Of course, what happened? The volume inside increased, right? Now, the volumes increase and the mass same. What happened? The same particle you have, you know? Well, same amount of particles, more space for them. Do they collect more or less? Yes, now that's the word I'm looking for. Lesser collision, meaning what? The pressure? Smaller, correct. Yes, yes. So answer, simple. One word only, one mark's only, all right? Pressure, decrease, ah. decrease, that's it. Yes, because why? Your volume increase, pressure decrease. All right, based on your answer, 5B, 5C, 5B and 5C, deduce a relationship by relating mass, volume, and pressure. How? Now, what is the relationship between... Now, actually, mass, does it, does it uh, important? I mean, does it relate here? Does it affect anything? No, mass is the constant amount, right? Uh, then you put aside volume and pressure first. What is the relationship? You got answer anymore, right? Your volume increased, your pressure decreased, right? Uh -huh. Now, one thing very important, uh, listen. Whenever they ask for relationship in paper two, used larger, smaller, higher, lower, increase, decrease. That's enough. 
no need to say what directly or inverted proportion. Okay. Well, you could, but normally, right, we only use the word directly or inversely proportional when there's a graph provided. Yeah, so some teacher, they can minus your mark one if you write inversely proportional. Because you don't know, ma. You, got, you got no graph also. You got no formula also. You got no table, no data also. How do you know they are exactly inversely proportional? Maybe they just increase and decrease, right? Uh -huh. So rule number one, uh, paper two, punya relationship questions, right? Just mention increase, decrease enough or increase. No need to say what directly proportional or inversely proportional. You understand what I mean? Now here, what I will just write, uh, I will say pressure of the air in the syringe, all right, syringe increases when the volume of the air decreases. Volume of the air decreases. Provided, one thing you need to mention about mass also, uh, yes, mass is constant, correct, but you must say uh, mass of the gas remain uh, unchanged, constant, fixed, either word up to you. This one doesn't matter, but you need to mention because the question also uh, relate pressure, volume, and mass together. That's a, that's a point, okay? Relate them together. Well, physics law, explain this. Sequence doesn't matter. Normally, we will put, uh, we will put in a way where it makes sense more. Lah. Yeah, so like pressure increase when volume increase. Uh -huh. So this is your responding, this is your manipulator. Lah. Uh -huh. So I will recommend, you know, when, when a sentence, when your sentence, you read through that time, right? Um, it's more smooth, you know? Then your teacher will understand you faster, one, right? You see, when we when we write answers, right, you need to write in a way where your markers expecting it. Then they will mark it easier. They will believe that oh, these students know what he's doing, one. Uh, so don't, don't your structure of sentence is very important actually. I mean, in a way, la, to make your marker become more feel more comfortable, la, right? It's not wrong if you say the it. Just that weird. Okay, state physics law. Well. What physics law tells you, the pressure, volume, inversely proportional, and then the mass constant. Some of the temperature don't change one. Ah, yes, correct. You remember the, 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 the gas law? No, no. Bernoulli principle says velocity. The one is not volume. Can I put greater? The, yeah, yeah, you can use the word. The greater the volume, the, 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 the lower the pressure. Can, can, can. The... No, for Bernoulli principle, right? The one, the V is velocity. Velocity increase, pressure decrease. But this one is volume, different, different. Okay. So here, this one, Boss law. Okay, Boss law. Why you change my word? Boss law. Recall gas law. How many gas law we have actually? Now, one thing, uh, if you want to recognize the law quickly, right? The best way is what? To remember the constants of each law. Because, you know, you go and look at the relationship harder, ma, right? But constant means what? If the whole question never mentioned one, or sometimes they will just say, they're literally here, without changing temperature. They're telling you the temperature is constant. So one glance here, I know we are talking about Boyce's law because the temperature is the same, all right? But you could remember, right, by using the constant, it's actually much, much faster one, okay? So what you have, uh, uh, I suppose, uh, in total, you got three things. You got Boyce's law, you got Charles' law, some more you got. Here's the Guy Lussac law. Wait, why Alisa come out? Stop changing my word. Lussac law. Okay. Uh, one by one. Just now we mentioned already, my right? For boss law, what is the constant? Huh? Temperature, yes. Some more. Charles? Charles is pressure. And then lastly, he looks like is volume. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you remember the, the pizza man I teach you before, la, then this is the easy way. La. Okay, so three things here. These are all the constants. Okay. Remember, constant is to, you know, number one, form formula faster. Number two, to recognize what formula to use faster as well. Okay. Boss law temperature, he looks like pressure law, and then uh, Sorry, uh, Charles' law is pressure law, uh, pressure constants. He looks like it's volume constants. Okay. Next, 
based on kinetic theory, explain why the air filled balloon in 5.2 grows in size when the piston is pulled back. Charles' law is like that. Okay, uh, regarding this aprosophy thing, uh, boils. It's like, uh, I'll take this away first. Huh? Boyle's law, Charles' law, Demon Sex law. Um, this one, your your English, your 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 English law, uh, your if you got if the name itself got S, then you put the apostrophe at the back. Ah, uh, same thing for what you know, Archimedes. So every time uh, a lot of people got this problem, you know what? Archimedes principle, how you spell? Uh, how do you spell Archimedes principle? R key me this now this is the, the scientist name you know then after that only aprosophy uh, a lot of you are uh, you do like this hey hello this one your english you just see she will start crying you know exactly where you got like that one Archimedes principle so whenever the name itself got s right then the apostrophe put it back that's it okay so charles itself uh, this is the name uh, part of the name charles takan the person called charlie right Ah, so Charles. Okay. Next one. Um, regarding this, now here, this is the keyword to trigger yourself. Uh, every time, right? You see the word kinetic theory means what? You know what's kinetic theory? Whenever they say kinetic theory means what? You must talk about what? All the air particle, how the particle doing, whatever thing. Every time you see based on kinetic theory, then you start saying the particle collide ah, uh, and then you know form pressure that kind of thing uh. Okay. So first thing first, we talk about five point two. Why the five point two right balloon blow in size? Now, step one now, okay? You pull back the pistons. Here, the volume increase, right? What happened when the volume increase? What happened when the volume increase? The pressure will decrease. Because why? The particle collide lesser, then the pressure become lower. And then now, the question is, you need to focus at the balloon. Or why the balloon blow in size? Simple. The pressure outside drop, huh? what about the pressure inside? The pressure inside any changes or not? Uh, the pressure inside remains actually. But the problem is what? The thing is, no, no, no. The pressure inside don't increase. The thing is, yes. Uh, the reason why you expand in size is because the outside pressure drop. So as compared, the pressure here seems like bigger. You understand or not? It's the same thing anyway. It's like before that was like that 10, 10. And then when I increase the volume, the 10 here dropped to 8. Did I change the value here? No what? It's the outside drop. That's why what happened next thing, always remember I mentioned before, my right? Pressure always push from, pressure always push from high pressure to low pressure. So if the pressure inside is bigger, they will start pushing outwards. They start pushing outwards. That's why they expand in size. You understand? So as compared, the pressure inside bigger than the pressure outside. Why? Because the pressure outside, the pressure outside is smaller due to the volume increase. Understand? That's the whole point here. Got it? Again, clear. Uh, so your answer very simple la. Now talk about talk about the 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 collision la. Remember because we over here this is kinetic theory. So what happened is you can mention la. first thing first, all right? When the piston is pulled back, step by step, you know. Again, some of you say, hey, but they only give me two marks. Do I need to write more? You can always write more. You know. Let's say like you feel like your your answer is actually three points answer. Nothing wrong one. You write more, of course, the maximum mark again is too long, but be more detailed. Uh, sometimes save your life because you don't know exactly what is the, the keyword your teacher looking for. Uh, right now. So be more detailed by yourselves. Yes, I never seen people answer more detail than got minus one. Yes, now I say more detail means what you know. You say A, A1, A2, A3. It's not A1, A2, then B. Then of course the point B is out of point. Uh, the one is basically like nonsense, uh, right? That one the teacher minus one. Uh, but if you say A1, A2, then you add on A3. Nothing wrong. Just further elaborate. Okay? Understand? So when a piston is pulled back, what happened? When a piston is pulled back, what happened? Uh, the volume of the syringe increases. What happened next? The volume increased already? No, no. Too fast. Why the pressure decrease? Explain yourself. That's why you see, this is one of the bad habits. You always try to do this. Straight away, not wrong, but just keeping too many. The pressure decrease, everybody know why. Uh, then say so. The air particles in the syringe collide lesser at 
and result in ah, smaller pressure in the syringe. Or you can say result in or causes the pressure decreases also can. All right. So therefore, the balloon grow in size as the pressure in the balloon now is larger. Uh, like that, two marks. Oh, ah, yeah. Get it? Questions? Anything you want to ask about question five before I go on? Ah, what's a piston? Piston is this thing that way. Read, read. <laughs> Look at diagrams. Okay. So far so good, everybody. Ken. Are you done? You done? Next, huh? Number six. Diagram 5.1, 5.2 shows how parallel light rays are. Ah, this is the one I'm seeing. Uh, to the type of lens effect. F is the focal point of the lens. I know your diagram is a bit dark, so you can look at mine anyway. So what we have here is light ray pass through the lens, they focused. This one, the light ray go through the lens already, they separated, okay? 5.1, 5.2, compare the type of lens used. Uh, this is the one I say, no? right? Now, sometimes, right, you get situations like that. Could you compare this? How you compare this, right? Now, like, there's nothing to compare about, right? So just what, as I say, if you're gonna compare, right, mention whatever statement you see. Now, first thing first, you know what kind of shape you see this? Now, you cannot see them. I might draw more obvious for you. Uh. This one, the lens is like that one. And then this one, the lens, this shape. Uh, come, tell me what shape are we having in 5.1? 5.1, 5.1. What shape is that? Yep, we're having a convex. Correct. What about this one here? Uh, this is a concave. All good. Okay. All right. Now, then mention some. Uh. Compare the lens. Cannot say anything. Then simply just tell them uh, in diagram. Uh, yeah. 5.1. What happened? The lens used is convex lens. And in diagram. 5.2. The lens used in. Used is. Concave lens. Got it? And next one, compare how parallel the parallel rays of light propagates after passing through the lens. Again, cannot compare, right? Say what you see. Now, what's this? What, what, what do you call this? I, I believe I mentioned before, my right? Where all the light focus, we got a word to describe that. What do you think? Focus is not correct. Yes, uh, converge. This one? Separated is called go two way diverge. Correct. There you go. Just tell them. All right. Literally, uh, the parallel rays converged after passing through the lens in diagram five point one and. The rays diverged after passing through lens in diagram 5.2. I just need you to mention, uh, like literally, the keyword is to talk about converged and diverged. Okay? No, no, you cannot say focus at focal point and they don't focus at focal. That one is not a comparing. That's a wrong answer. You cannot do that. No, no, no. Definitely not. Okay. Uh, next one. Compare the positions of the focal point of the lens. Oh. Uh, where's the focal point? I can give you, right? Now this one focal point is here. And then this one focal point is here. Right. So how do you compare? Well, uh, left and right is not a good answer. 
Let her know it's not going to happen. Before after lens can, can, acceptable. Before after lens can, acceptable. Uh, what else? You, you, can, you can use the incident ray as a reference point. You can use the incident ray as, uh, uh, yes, exactly. You can say same side and different side as the object. Or now, there's no object here actually. So the, the so-called object, uh, your, the so-called object, right? It's actually what? Uh, it's actually uh, 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 the, the light rays, okay? So you could say, now, 5.1 there, this is where your object, uh, or, or your incident ray, uh, and then this is the focal point. It's on the other side. Okay, now this one, right? Your object is here, your incident ray is here, and then your focal point is also on the same side. So you could say before lens or after lens also can, all right? Nearer cannot, nearer cannot. So what I will write, right, is that I will say the focal point of the lens in diagram 5.1 is at the same, I'm oh, sorry is that opposite side of the incident ray and the focal point of the lens in diagram 5.2 is at the same side of the incident ray. Further nearer cannot, further away from the source of light, the one known not recommended. They don't actually. So this is better. Okay. So 5.1 is opposite side, right? And then 5.2 is same side. Because you got no object. That's why say incident ray. This the so-called incident ray is your object. Ah uh, yeah. In case you're wondering. Before and after rays, uh no, same side better. You want to say before, after, then say lens. Before lens and after lens. Okay. Based on your answer, A1, A2, A3, state the conclusion regarding uh, type of lens used and the propagation of light after passing through a lens. And then the type of lens and the position of the focal point. Now, this one basically means you need to explain about all the convex lens, how, concave lens, how. All right. Uh, you could just say one. I mean, you can be lazy about that. Uh -huh. So you can say over here, this one, you could literally say, uh, if the lens is a convex lens, the light ray will converge after passing through the lens. And vice uh, this is a very good word to use. Uh. Uh, of course, say, hey, but my teacher likes to catch me a lot. Oh, no, can I, can I do that? Well, if you don't want, you can be more detailed. You can just re rewrite one more sentence. Uh. But you know, what marks on him? Uh, what do you expect? Why not? If the lens is convex lens, the light ray will converge after passing through a lens. And then if you want, you can just write, uh, uh, and if the lens is a concave lens, the light ray will diverge after passing through. You can just add on one more line uh, if you don't want to use the word like vice versa. Converge lens, converge light after passing through uh, lens, while concave lens diverge light after passing through lens. Uh, can also, can also. All right. Next one, type of lens and the position of the focal point. Well, same thing. If the lens is a concave, sorry, convex lens, the focal point will be opposite side of the incident ray and vice versa. That's a very good word to use uh, every time you vice versa then you really. But of course, uh, you say like, what well, if my teacher don't like me say uh, using vice versa in exam, right? Then you follow uh, because at the end of the day, it's your teacher that is marking your paper, not me, right? But I'm telling you, okay. Uh, incident ray is this. The light shooting out that one. Uh -huh. So concave lens, incident ray is like that. Uh, and then convex, after that, pass by. Here only got focal point. Incident is here. Opposite side. Vice versa means the logic reverse. The ballet. I 
Are you done? Do we go on? Some more? Next. Dragon 5.3 shows a movie showing uh, at Invictus Cinema. Projector with a lens in Dragon 5.1 is used to produce a real image in cinema. Uh, question number one, what is the meaning of real image? Nah, definition, this kind of thing, uh, memorize only, uh, no, no other options. One, uh. Uh, I believe I mentioned many times, uh, but again, I'll remind you again. Definition, you want to memorize or not, your choice. Okay, definition, you want to memorize or not, your, your choice. Because, come on, you know, people too. But they will normally make up about uh, five marks. Uh. Uh, one question here and there, here and there. Usually it's about five marks. Uh. So you decide whether this five marks is important for you or not. If you say, ah, five marks only, man, right? Give it to him. Uh. Then you make sure you got 95. Uh. Uh -huh. If not, then you know, take your time to memorize that. Uh. Anyway, what is a real image? What's a real image? Image that can be projected onto. Screen. Literally, the answer is you know they are hinting you already. Here, yeah. this is what they want. Real image, image that can be projected. Uh, can be formed on the screen also can can be projected on the screen also can. Actually, real image and virtual image quite easy to memorize, Mara or not. If it's uh, if they ask virtual image, right? Literally, you change one word only. This, your answer is image that cannot be projected onto the screen. That's it. And I'm sorry, right? Now, next one. State two other characteristics of the image produced on a similar projector. Now, beside real, what else we need? Well, they give you a hint also, my right? Look at the diagrams. The light source from here, then push, become this. Means what? And cinema means what? Exactly, they are magnified. All right, magnified. Someone? Magnified two. Two. Magnified, and then? Aha, uh -huh. this is one thing that you always get cheated. Answer is inverted. Not upright. You say, huh? But, like, what am I seeing? Isn't it like the correct one? Well, simple. Uh. Inverted means the image is the reverse direction of the object. Nobody say, you know, upright. You know, the idea of upright means what I know. Upright means they are same direction to me. Yes, nobody say upright must be the correct orientations. All right. We could have like, you know, object the ballet. Then you do like that. This is also upright. Uh -huh. Then you say, then how is this in inverted? Simple. You want this one can be seen, my right? What you do? You put the ballet. Uh. So here become this one. Nothing wrong, but right? You know that your eyeball, your eyeball, your iris, I mean, your pupil is actually a, 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 a convex lens. Yeah. So whatever you're seeing, right, when they project to your to your retina, it's inverted one. But your brain is a very strong processor. They can violate everything. Uh -huh. Whatever you see actually is inverted one. Just that your brain itself will reverse it again for, for you. Uh -huh. Exactly. It's the same idea here. Lo. They purposely put the ballet so that, you know, um, become this correct, the, the so-called correct direction for you to see. Okay, now rule number one, uh, a simple trick for you. Remember this, uh, regardless whatever lens we're talking about, whatever lens or mirror also one, whenever you see a real image, whenever you see a real image, one thing here, you can always be sure. Okay, real and inverted is one package one. They come together always. Yes, virtual, if it's a virtual image, then yes, it will be an upright image. This one also, the package come together. Yes, whether lens, whether mirror, same. So you can be sure. Whenever virtual, then upright, real, then inverted. Remember the shortcut I mentioned before, right? To, to remember all the characteristics of convex lens. Yes, only convex need to remember shortcut. Man. Because why? If it's a concave lens, how? Concave lens, very simple one. Concave lens, they only form one type of image. Concave lens, right? They only produces diminished, virtual, upright, you see? Even concave, virtual, upright. They together one. So this one, one package. This one, one package. You understand? So when I see real, I don't even need to think about it. I write inverted straight away because I know for sure they're correct. But magnified, the one depends. Uh, can be magnified, can be inverted. Sorry, can be magnified, can be diminished, can be same size. Yes, depending on where you put your object. But if it's the real image, it's always inverted. Okay, next. Uh, questions regarding this? All good? Okay, uh, so virtual upright, one package. Real inverted, one package. Moving on. Diagram 7 shows an ice cube that is put inside of a container which is covered with a piece of paper. After a few minutes, it is found that the ice cube changed to water. Well, obviously, what does it mean by this? Change to water. A different word, okay? Come. Process, uh, literally, the answer they're looking here. This one, I asked your primary school 
brother also know ah. Melting lah, of course, right? Hey, why I got freezing one? Ooh. Ice cube become water. Next one. Temperature does not change. Does not increase. Why? Well, we've answered already, right? It is not we mentioned now, right? How come? Every time when we're changing state, the temperature do not change because the energy, the heat is absorbed to well, I gave you answers now already. Now you tell me the answer. Every time when we're changing state, why the temperature do not even change? Yes, I don't want break bonding. I say a thousand times already. I don't want break bonding. Yes. Overcome force of attractions between molecule. Particle also can actually. Molecule, particle, same thing. Here I will write particle because it's uh, melting. My uh, solid particle is better, more correct. Hmm. And changed its state from solid to liquid. This one, they give one mark only. La. So if you write until here, you write this one already enough to get marks one. But of course, uh, you want to, again, I say long, nothing wrong to be more detailed, right? Uh, so even the back part, this one, this sentence don't write also got marks. Uh. Yes. Uh, one marks only. Uh. The two marks then must mention two. Uh. Now, just now we got the question two marks. Uh, that's the idea. So one mark, then one point, two marks, then two point. You get it? Mm -hmm. Moving on, next. But there's one thing, you know, I confuse a lot. Like, where do you learn the break bonding part? I never teach you all break bonding, you know. So I'm very, very confused. Like, you know, not confused, I'm just, just wondering why a lot of you mentioned break bonding. Where, where do you learn the break bonding part? Chemistry? I, I suppose chemistry teach you about overcome force of attraction also. What? No. The teacher asks you to write break bond now. Huh? Can me? Not recommended. Uh. Overcome is better. Uh. Yeah. I mean, that is the correct theory. Uh. No. Come, heat absorb to change the ice cube. Textbook says overcome force of attraction. Exactly. That's the thing. That's why. That's why I'm just concerned. Like, why suddenly out of nowhere got big bond come out? Uh. Heat absorb to change ice cube into water. 3006. Calculate mass of ice cube. Uh, 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 specifically, then heat. Now, I said before, my right formula. This one changing what? Literally, temperature never changed, never increased. Yes, state formula. Uh, that's why you remember formulas based on this logic here. If you see change in temperature, then MC theta. If you see change in states, then ML. Actually, quite obvious now. Come on, they mentioned already, ma. Specific latent heat, it's L here. Specific latent heat, it's L here. Okay, so heat value 3360. 3360 equals to the mass is what you're looking for. The L is 3.36 times 10 to the power of 5. Should be quite easy, la, the number. How much? The number should be a very nice number because you look at this, you know. La. How much? 0 0.01 la, is it? Ah, there we go. Ken, any questions over? All good, everybody. Ken, now a reminder about this because uh, you, get, you get tricked all the time. On. Now listen. The, the name specific latent heat, right? Specific latent heat, right? Refer to the value. Yes, now specific latent heat refer to this one, the L here. All right, now, oh, speaking of this, how many latent heat do we have? How many types of latent heat do we have? We got two, which is what? You will have latent heat of vaporization, correct? Vaporization. What is the other one? You also have latent heat of Fusion, correct as well. Now, when do you have the fusion? Sorry, when do you have the vaporization thing? When do you have the vaporization thing? Yes, now vaporization is for what? For you to convert from liquid to gas or come back. Now, I do both way, uh, both way. Uh, okay, later, I, that's why I draw this way. Hold on. Uh. Both way. Uh. And then this one, right, is for what? Solid to liquid, like that. Okay. Now I will draw like that one. Arrow, you draw this way, two way. Perhaps larger. This. Okay. Now 
Um, you know why you can go two way or not? That will depends on whether you absorb release or simple, right? Now, if you want to go from let's say solid to liquid, you absorb latent heat absorption. You melting, mah melting means you're absorbing, right? Now, when you go from liquid to solid, like freezing, you release. You release latent heat absorption. Now, liquid to gas absorb latent heat vaporization. Gas to liquid release latent heat vaporization. Now, listen carefully. If they ask you, if they ask you, what is the name of the heat? Used or absorbed during, uh, say, melting, then you mentioned latent heat of fusion. Enough. No need to put the word specific in front. Now, when we say specific latent heat, uh, this refer to the number, the three point three six. So let's say they ask you what is the name that you calculated. Let's say they ask you to calculate L, lah, Okay, you calculate, calculate everything. You found the L. They ask you what is the name of the the, the L you calculated. Then yes, you write this specific latent heat of water. But most of the time, right? The question will ask, what is the name of the heat? He said, what is the name of the heat? Absorbed or released. Then, just latent heat. No need specific impact. Am I clear about this? Very important. Every time people make a mistake, because you die, die, will write the specific there, and then you lose mark. I mean, you know exactly answer one. Like, answer is fusion, but it's wrong, because why? You put a specific impact. So, read properly. If they say, name the heat involved when you're changing state, then just latent heat, whatever, whatever. whatever. No need specific heat. No, sorry, no need specific word. Understood? Clear? Okay, nah. uh, don't make me say in exam idea. If they ask for name only, just latent heat only. No need specific. Understand? There we go. Okay. Now moving on next. Container seven. Cause ice cube to change the water quick. Suggest modification to avoid water cube change to water quickly based on the expect. Uh, this one, here we go. How do we do that? A bit of designer, but this one is more of like you know, I, I will call this as the mini essay. Lah. Yes, you know why mini essay because, because how many points you have? You only have like one, two, three, three points only. Normally it's five points one, right? Now, first thing first, how to make sure the eyes don't become water quickly. Step one, specific heat capacity of the container should be yes, higher specific heat capacity. Why uh, why do you have high specific heat capacity? So that the container does not heat up easily. All right. Uh, then if it does not heat up easily, means what? It won't heat up your water, uh, your ice cube inside. Right. Now, you know what? Actually, this question uh, is an overall idea. Because often you get confused one. You probably say, hey, how come? Uh, sometimes, right? I, I, I see some books say slow heat capacity. Or, and then some books say high how. Now, regarding this, um, container thing okay because sometimes you get this one or sometimes you get like you know the ice box okay a ice box especially so actually right now listen uh, ice box uh, is like that one you always got two layer one okay so you have the inner layer where you know this one is the one that directly in contact with the ice and everything one okay so this one uh, if i what the hell just happened Now let's say, I give you a very simple idea. If we're trying to design a perfect ice box, then this is the idea here. We will have outer layer and then you've got inner layer like this. Okay. This is actually what happened, supposedly. This is what you're supposed to have. Okay. Now, in this case, because they actually got show you like two way, two sided, outside, inside. Okay. Inner layer, outer layer. Now, this one you write down for you, very helpful one. The inner layer. The inside one that is in contact with the whatever you're keeping on your ice cream, your ice, whatever, okay. You want lower specific heat capacity. Okay, you want the specific capacity to be lower. And then the outer layer here, right? Uh, then yes, you want the specific heat capacity to be higher. Okay. So why higher? We got mentioned already, my right. The reason very simple because uh, so that it does not heat up easily. Okay, so it does not heat up easily. This one, that's the first thing here, right? Now, then the question comes, how, how, why, why do we need the inside to be low specific heat capacity? Why do we need the inner layer to, be, to have low specific heat capacity? Now, heat capacity lower meaning what? They easily heat up. At the same time, they easily cool down as well, all right? So this one, uh, the reason is because you want them to cool down faster. Yes, you want it to cool down 
faster, achieve thermal equilibrium faster with the ice inside, whatever. Okay, there you go. Mm. Because, uh, you see, you know what, what causes the ice to melt? To melt something, what happened? To melt something, what happened? I mentioned, oh, not everybody attend booster. Uh, I need to tell them again also. Uh, right, uh. Now, to, to melt something, right, your temperature must be different. Exactly. So if you got two objects, same temperature, the one they don't melt anything on my right now. The one already achieved thermal equilibrium. So uh, if you know what happened, if you use a high heat capacity material here, then the inner wall uh, they will take forever to cool down. Then actually the one that melting the ice is your wall instead of like outside heat. Uh -huh. So that's why the proper ice box supposed to be like that. Outside should be high heat capacity so that you know whatever from outside don't heat up. And then inside, you want to cool down quickly so that they achieve thermal equilibrium. They achieve same temperature with the inside stuff. Ah, uh, yes. Now, this one, if provided, they do mention, they, they do show you there's inner layer, there's outer layer. They do show you like two layer. But now, here you say, then why here no need to say whatever high low one because they didn't say anything. Ma. Now, generally, right? Generally, they, they didn't say what outer layer, inner layer, then you just say high heat capacity so they won't heat up easily. But if they do mention like specifically, you know, inner layer how, outer layer how, uh, there you go. This is the thing that you need to uh, go through. Understand? Got it? Ten. Uh -huh. Next, material of the container lid. Come, material of the container lid. Well, um, again, I say many times already, whenever you talk about material, try to avoid saying, I want plastic, I want rubber, I want whatever thing. Describe the characteristic instead. Why do you want the rubber? Why do you want a plastic? What is water? Whatever it is, like, okay? You want to describe the characteristics. First thing first, it must be heat insulator, correct? So why the rubber? Why the plastic? Because they are heat insulator. One more. Got one more characteristic you can mention as well. Beside having heat in, uh, insulator, what else? The, the color. The color, how? Density don't relate. Uh, for this case, you want to, you want to make sure your eyes don't melt only much. Bright color, correct. Okay, so you can say the material should be insulated with shiny color. How come? You know what's with the shiny surface, right? Uh -huh, they reflect it away. Yeah, so you could say uh, uh, um, reduce absorptions of heat. Because here you got two points, ma. You say insulator and, and, and shiny. So uh, you can you can you can explain them separately, but you could just mention that it reduces absorption here. Yeah, because uh, you just mentioned reflect heat not good enough because the reflect heat part is only for the shiny surface. What about the insulator? Right now, uh, that's good. Okay, next one, additional design of the container. What other design you need to put inside to make it a good bigger? No. Double layer can, uh, you can see it now. Actually, uh, you see here, right? Uh, regarding when, when, whenever we got two different layer here, you notice there is a layer in between, right? There's an empty space here, right? Now, whenever we're making like you no know, thermos, whatever, uh, the best is what you want to make sure this one here it's double layer, and then right, they are vacuum, vacuum only. They will make sure the heat loss slower. But then, what else can we do? Additional design of the container. Double layer is not exactly additional design. What you add on? Have you seen those thermal flasks before? Got thermometer not important now. No. <laughs> you basically just see it. Oh no, the temperature is rising. What can you do about it? Uh, wrap the container. Yes, you know some some thermal flasks they will have like a sponge ish sponge ish like you know a wrapper like that. A, 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 a something for you to put inside and then you keep it even better. Uh, there you go. Okay, so you could say have another layer. You can say wrap the container with a layer of what? Mm, insulator. Well, you don't know what material. Lah. Frankly speaking, you don't need to know as well. Okay, if you know, then can I? You can say cotton, you can say wool, 
right? Whatever. If you don't know, then just insert later long. It's fine. Huh? But if you know, you could write lah. Who uh, curtain uh, All these are good. Good. Keep insert later. Rubber is not actually. Okay. And what's the point of doing that? Your reason. It reduces heat loss. Sorry. It, re uh, uh, it reduces heat. Transfer into the container. Or you can say it reduces heat loss, heat absorb also can prevent the, the, the container from absorbing heat also. Can. Okay. Are you done? Can we go on some more? Should have handles. Um Not exactly a helping part though, because whatever you want, I mean, what they want uh, is to avoid ice from melting. Uh. So you say handle, then it's a, it's, a, it's a design for you to make yourself convenient, uh, but they don't reduce the heat loss of the laptop. So not recommended. Next, number eight, diagram eight shows the sound wave is produced when the man rubbed his moistened hand, as my finger, around the rim of the glass filled with water. Have you seen this before? I mean, have you tried doing this before? I know you rub it. You go like, mm. uh, normally it'll be, it'll be much louder and more obvious. Um, if you're dealing with, um, you know, wine glass. It works for me. Like, it works perfectly fine for me. I don't know about you. Yeah. Wine glass is the most of, uh, easier to do. Right? Do we need to write example for the heat? Incident? No, I already say you, if you know, you can write now. If you don't know, then just, just leave it as a layer. You can say wrap the container with a layer of wool, wrap the container with a layer of cotton, wrap the container with a layer of insulator. Hmm. If you don't know, don't remember, it's okay. I just write container, insulator, sorry. All right. It, it works what? Don't worry. It works for me though. Uh -huh. What type of wave is a sound wave? Here you come, uh, three marks. What is the wave here? Sound wave is the only, only example of what? Longitudinal wave. The rest is all transverse, ah. Huh? Yep, the rest is all transverse. Uh, light wave, water wave, electromagnetic wave, they're all transverse. What happened to the loudness if the man rubs the glass harder? Give your reason. Uh, simple lah. Rub harder means what? More force. What do you think? Exactly. Louder, la, right? Or not? Louder, first of all, loudness increase. Why ah? Reason? Yes, uh, because because when you rub harder, what happens? The amplitude increases. Okay. I mean, you can put them in sentence yourself now. Okay. Next one. What happened to the pitch of the sound if the rub, if they rub the if the man rub the glass filled with lesser volume of water? Explain your answer. Uh, come pitched. You know, means like pitch, right? You know the do ring glass. Oh, now so how the pitch how they go higher or lower? Higher pitched. How come? Lesser volume of water. Or why is it higher pitched? Now, when your volume lesser means what? When your volume lesser means what? The the water become lesser, right? The particle become lesser, right? So with the same amount of force. Do you think those particles vibrate faster or slower? Ah, the question is like that. Now let's say like, I apply the same force, but if I got lesser particle, same force also, do they go faster or slower? So if they vibrate faster, what does it mean by that? The frequency increase or decrease? 
exactly. Now, same force. Let's say like, the same force before that, I need to vibrate 10%. Now I only have to vibrate 5%. So of course, the 5% vibrates more, right? I got I give them the same energy. I give them the same force. 10%, I need, let's say for example, I got 10 joules of energy, go to 10%. Each one of them get one joules. 10 joules of energy, give to 5%. Each one of them get two joules now. More energy to vibrate them. They go faster, of course, right? Uh -huh. There you go. So this is the idea here. The pitch of the sound, how? Yeah, would actually increase. Pitch increases. Why? Because the particle will vibrate faster and frequency of the sound increases. Hmm. So actually, la, the main thing here is uh, you they want you to relate the loudness, amplitude, pitch, and frequency thing. La. I believe you mentioned before, right? Uh, loudness controlled by amplitude and then pitch controlled by frequency, right now. Uh -huh. now. Next one, sound wave can be used to treat kidney stone without surgical. The treatment is called extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy. Uh, whatever, okay, this is not bio, they don't test you the new one. Uh, come, choose one. You got treatment R, S, and T. Which one is the best to break the kidney stone? Most effective way. They got hint here, you know. Frequency of the wave, type of the reflector, and then type of the medium in column X. First thing first, what do you want the frequency to be? High frequency or low frequency? Of course, high frequency, right or not? Why high frequency? What's the point of having high frequency? Yes, frequency higher, what happened? They penetrate further, they can travel further, so they go all the way into your kidney, right? Now, next one, what about the surface? Do you want a plain reflectors or do you want a concave? This one a bit like, you know, literally free marks for you. Like they draw nicely some more. Of course, you want they targeted to exactly where your kidney stone be, right? Uh, so we choose concave. Huh? Now, next one. What about the column? Do we do air or do we do water? Do we do air or do we do water? Okay, exactly. We do water. We do water. So what's the answer? Why water? Ah? This is one thing that probably will argue. You know. Why not air? Isn't it should be air? No, water is better. Why? One simple reason. Think about water and air. What is the difference between them? What is the difference between them? Exactly, water particle is nearer, right? So that means what happens to your vibrations? They can pass on faster. Exactly. Sound travel faster in water. You know that, right? Uh -huh. Now, normally, lah, let's say we talk about speed of sound. Ah, in air, right, they are doing about 300 to 330. Usually, la, normally, la, uh, speed of light, sorry, speed of light, but la, speed of sound in air, they are about 300 to 330 meter per second. Speed of uh, 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 sound in water, they will be about 1,005. They go much faster. Uh, then after that, you got speed of sound in, in, in solid. They go even faster. They can go up to about 5,000. Exactly. So, faster, lo, right? Uh, faster. And of course, then the question comes. No, no, no. This one, your particle is closer because sound travel based on pass. They, they pass on the vibrations on. Yeah, so if the particle are closer, then they can pass on faster. So that's why sound travel fastest in solid because the particle is literally next to each other. Well, then you probably will ask, then why don't we do solid? Why don't we do solid? Uh, why don't we do solid? Solid cannot fit perfectly. Uh. Yes. You know why? Li because liquid can, you know, basically based on your body shape and then fits up. Uh. Uh, so solid, uh, they like that. In between, got small air gaps on. You understand? Uh? Uh -huh. your, your body, number one, is not really like, you know, straight, uh, right? They are curvy a bit, right? So if it's solid, uh, then like that. Then in between, there will be some empty spaces, you know. Uh, they're not good, no? they don't transmit well. What you want is, you want liquid to kind of like fill up all the spaces like that because liquid, you know, they're they shapeless. It fits into your shapes. Now this logic, same as what, you know. Um, you know, ultrasound. Anybody done ultrasound before? Like scanning for your uh, uh, muscles or, or even like your ovaries and everything. They will put like a gel uh, on, the, on, the, on the device. Now that one is a solid one, isn't it? That one is to have solid to transmit the sound, but they will put like a gel on this so that they will have a better contact with your skin. 
Yeah, because our skin is bumpy, bumpy one, uh, then your device is like that. You see, you got empty spaces. What do you do, right? Simple. You put gel, gel, gel like that. Same logic. Uh. That's why the liquid, it's better because it fits nicely according to your body shape. Okay. Now, so here we go. Number one is we want the frequency of the sound, higher frequency. What's the reason? The, that's the ultrasound, you know. Did they mention ultrasound? Oh, they didn't, but well, answer is ultrasound. The sound can travel further. Is the penetrate further also can travel further also can, right? Uh, type of reflectors we want concave. Why? Because concave can do what? Look at diagrams. Ah, uh. diagram. The diagram hints you already, Mara. Right Diagrams of concave shape. So that the sound wave can be converged. Sorry, can be reflect and converged directly to the kidney stone. Uh, then you won't vibrate the wrong places. Right now, you only want the kidney stone to like all the way. Not just only to the organ, you know, you just want they hit the kidney stone. So it's better to have like a pinpointing, right? Lastly, type of medium in column X, of course, we want water in column X. How come? Because sound travel, sound able to travel, able to travel faster in liquid, in water. Yep. And there you go. I suppose the answer is. Now this is again, uh, as I say, the mini essay lah, because normally essay is always 10 marks one, but this one here, as you could see, literally one, two, three, and four. Basically, uh, they get one, two, three, six mark, and then plus this seven together. Okay, there we go. Any questions regarding this? Ken, are we good? Can we go on the walk? Okay, so, oh, questions. Why high frequency can travel further is because uh, the reason very simple. Uh, now look, first thing first, the formula that uh, B equals F lambda, right? So when your frequency higher, the thing is, um, it result in one thing is that your wavelength becomes shorter. Okay, the right? Remember the formulas, B equals F lambda. So what happened is, um, when you have this frequency higher thing, right? The wavelength becomes shorter and it leads to one more thing. Uh, when you got shorter wavelength, the good thing about it is what? they tend to diffract lesser, okay? They tend to diffract lesser. Diffract less, that's why now your energy don't spread. Uh, that means you got, you got a lot of energy remains. That's why it can go all the way to the end. Something like that. Yep, so shorter wavelength, diffract lesser, go further, okay? So when you diffract more, you spread more. Uh. So again, we mentioned before, uh, it's like this. Whether you want the energy, your sound wave to do this, okay? Or you want the sound wave to do this. So if they don't spread, they can go further. But you know, it's a bad thing also because they don't spread now. So it all, now that's why diffract more and less. Uh, that there's no good or bad one. It all depends on what you want it actually. Because well, um, if you diffract more, then your coverage is more. But the problem is what? They don't go further. That's the thing. They do not travel far. They only cover like this area. Now when you diffract lesser, then they don't cover larger area. Then you can go all the way. So it all depends on what you want. Do you want it go further or do you want it go wider? Depends. Okay, this one they do this. Diffract more, sorry, diffract less, travel further. Okay, so that's why we choose high frequency, yeah, because higher frequency only can travel uh, further. Okay, now next we finally go into this lah, uh, your new new subtopic, which is section B, I mean subtopic block, uh, new section section B. Now for your essay, I mean for your paper two, uh, the situation is like this. Uh, you got two sections. Sorry, you got three sections. Section A, section B, section C. Section A, all compulsory law. We all do, right? Section B, normally, if you say SPM format, right? It's like that one. Answer any one question. You read the questions, uh, they will let you know. Uh, like literally, the instruction follow only. As long as you simple one loose, uh, okay? You make sure one thing only. Every section B and C, uh, every section you must do at least one question. Uh. Yes, die die must do one question. Because why, you know? Section A, you got eight questions. B, 1, C, 1, all together, you need to do 10. 10 questions for sure. Okay, now, 
if they let you choose, you choose whatever you want. Oh, you want to do question nine or question ten, your choice. But of course, when we're doing duration, we do all of them. Okay. Ah, and then if they don't let you choose, like for example, if you go to section C, ah, section C got no choosing one. You know, one questions, one only one must do. Ah, that's the main point. You get it? Ah. So anyway, we look at question number nine first. Ah, I do both. Ah, okay. I do number. I do both also. Okay. Question nine. I get it from past. I'm not too sure anyway. I just find whatever question I find it, you know, interesting. I find it like you know, good. I put that off. I don't see. I don't remember on like whether is it a past year or not. Hmm. This is question last year my exam. Oh, is it? Oh, is it? Hmm. Right now more Chapter three. Uh, not many question you can ask you one. But, uh, then the question always are uh, this and that. Uh, very similar one, actually. <laughs> yeah. So now come. 5.1, 5.2, all right? You have uh, two different situations here. 5.1, right? We've got object P, mass 10 mkg. And then uh, object X, the mass is mkg. Distance, it's R meter between them, okay? Then 5.2, you have your object Q, the mass is 2 mkg. And then object X is uh, mkg. All right, and then distance also R meter. So literally, right, what happened here? Uh, see, distance is the same. The only difference is this one is much larger. This one is 2M, okay? And then the other side also same. X is the same, also M. Both object M in the diagram is identical. Now, identical meaning what? They, they are same, uh, literally same. The only difference is what? P is larger than Q, that's it, right? Number one, state Newton's law of gravitations. Uh, this one, right, you can remember, I teach you one simple trick, okay? You can remember using formulas. Yes, Newton law of gravitations, right? You can remember using the formulas. Why do I say so? Uh, come, first thing first, how do we calculate formula? Gravitational force, formulas, right? Now, I mean, you're dealing with law of gravitation, ma. of course, gravitational force, all right? G M M over R square, right? Uh -huh. Why do I need to remember the formulas? Because, right, the formulas will tell you the relationship, am I right? Now, first thing first, what is the relationship between mm and then force? This is a fraction. This is a fraction, as in what? As in, uh, uh, this one upper part increase. What happened to the force? Yes, they increase together. What do you call this? Both increase together, directly proportional. Now, at the same time, what about r square and then f? What is the relationship between them? r square increase, then how? Yep, your force will decrease, right? What do you call this? Inversely proportional. Ah, there we go. So when you convert this, become a uh, definition. Simple, lah, right? Literally, what does this law of universe, uh, law of gravitation says? Uh, the F stands for what, by the way? Force not good. Lah. What kind of force? GMM over R squared calculate what force? Yes, gravitational force. Yes. So you could say uh, in this universe, right, every object, Every object is attracted by another object with a force that is directly proportional to the product of masses of them and inversely proportional to the square of distance between their center. Now this is a full definition, uh, of course, uh, I make it detailed, uh, right? But well, you, you see, can I not write this whole thing? Like what if I miss out a bit on this and that? Well, as long as you manage to mention the gravitational force is directly proportional with the product of masses and inversely proportional to the square of distance, uh, then you most likely get marks anyone. But again, uh, you want to be more detailed. Okay, every object is attracted by another object with a force directly proportional. Now there you go, the force here referred to the gravitational force and then directly proportional to what? You know what's the product of masses, right? Uh, because it's mm. Uh, because the formula is mm. Uh. You notice I, I didn't mention the g inside, right? Because g is a constant, it's fixed. It don't change one. So you literally just put product of masses mm, that's more than enough, okay? 
F and MM directly proportional and then inversely proportional to what? Square of distance as in what? R. Okay. Can I write square of orbital radius? Nope. Because um, not necessarily you orbit one. Let's say, you know, between you and your friend, your friend sitting next to you, do your friend orbit around you? You're just sitting there, all right? So it's just the distance from the center to center. Yep. Not necessarily to be orbiting one. So you write orbital radius as well. Yep. Uh, the idea is like that, you know, like, Orbital radius, right? It's a smaller branch. Then the square of distance is more of like the general answers. Like, you know, this distance refer to distance between center. Lah. It's like human. And then orbital radius is like man. Uh -huh. So it's a very small part because some objects don't orbit one. So better to write this on general answer. Okay. Again, based on 5.1, compare the mass of P and Q and then distance of the P and X. And then object of Q and X and the gravitational force exerted on X by P and then Q. So here, right, what you need to compare, you notice they give you many marks, right? You notice they give you many marks, right? Three marks means what? You need to write three points up. And why? Because you notice how many things you're trying to compare? Compare the mass of P and Q, distance between P to X and then Q to X, and then lastly, gravitational force. So here, that's why you notice, right? You got three things to compare to. You need to compare the mass, you need to compare the distance, and you need to compare the, uh, uh, um, the gravitational force, okay? Well, I think easy, quite easy answers are here, actually. What's the point we say here? Number one, mass of P and Q, which one larger? Is, yes, greater than object Q. Because a P is 10 M, you know, Q is only 2M. Of course, this one larger, all right? Next one, what do you compare next? It's actually two sentences, you know? I mean, like three sentences. You don't have to write them in all together. One. So, you, number one, you say the mass of object. Wait, what the hell is this? Mass of object P is greater than object Q. Then you can really uh, move on. Uh, distance between P and X is same as distance between Q and X. Because the distance same, right? Uh, just now we got mentioned already, right? You see, this one different, but then your R is the same anyway. Both also R meter, so same. And then lastly, what is the third point? Which one larger? As we know, which one larger? The gravitational force of P. Right. Exerted. On object X. Y P is larger than gravitational force accepted on X by Q. There you go. This one all together with a three different point here. Now, this kind of essay, uh, same thing one actually, uh, as I said, uh, you gonna get, whenever you see the word compare, uh, don't need, you literally just compare only, very easy on this kind of question. So three marks, you make sure you man, compare three things. All right, there you go, three marks, three for you. Next thing, normally, right, they one set on, you know, exactly, they're always one set on, as in what? Uh, after, you, you always get one set, as in like, they'll ask you compare, 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 then after that, relate, relate. It's always like that, compare, 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 then relate. Because what, what's the point of comparing? Because they want you to look at those comparisons you wrote here and then try to come up with a relationship. Again, whenever we do a relate kind of question here, no need to say what directly proportional. Even you know la, they are directly proportional. No need. Literally just mentioned directly proportional. So increase or decrease will be. Okay? Relate mass of object with its gravitational force except on object. Uh, now, you want to relate mass with gravitational force. One thing. And then after that, um, what else? Relate, make a deductions regarding the relation between gravitational force between two objects and the mass of the two objects. Now, first thing we relate first, uh, easier, my right? Literally, the mass and gravitational force, what is the relationship between them? Uh, no, don't, don't, don't directly proportional, I say already. Ah, uh, yes. So mentions, huh? 
the mass of an object increases the gravitational force exerted increases okay hmm. now you know what's made of deductions deduction is more like a conclusion uh, now you can say what directly proportional or inversely proportional okay deduction is more like a conclusion then you can say uh, this directly proportional uh, then that's why the next point you say right make a deduction regarding the relation between the gravitational force or between two objects and the mass of the two objects so that is when you say long okay this is when you show in the gravity Rotational force between two objects is directly proportional to the product of masses of the two objects. Uh -huh. So when we say deductions, then yeah, it will be more like a conclusion thing. Then yes, you could write the, 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 the directly proportional thing. Okay. Uh, if right, greater mass can I already say I, uh, greater, greater increase into the same one actually also can. Okay, come. Explain what causes moon to orbit around the Earth. Uh, come. And by the way, this one, this is a very typical question you like to ask about. Uh, what is it? Why? Now, first thing first, rules of, when you see this, uh, when we say orbit, why? When we orbit, what, what, what is involved here? When we say orbit, exactly, we will have something for centripetal force, right? Uh -huh. Then, then why, why? What causes the centripetal force of the moon actually? Exactly by the Earth, you know. Now again, the the Moon is gonna do this orbiting around us is because Earth is pulling you, right? You know what happened with without this Earth pulling you? Now remember I mentioned before, it comes in pair. You got this centripetal force and then centrifugal force. Uh huh. Uh huh. So by right number one, Moon now, if there's no gravitational force pulling there, by right they should have just go straight. Um, object is always like imagine you get a string, you swing. The moment you cut off the string, right, the object just flies straight tangent to the direction, whatever they, they were going. So at this point, they were going here, right? Let's say the string gone, then they just fly this way straight all the way. Exactly. So in this case, right, the problem is what now? Your earth, it's here. Okay, let's say this is the earth, okay? I make it larger a bit. And then after that, the moon is here. Now, actually, what happened is, now, see, uh, one more point here. What happened is, now, uh, moon is doing orbit around the Earth. When anything, not just only moon, anything, when you know from big to small, an object doing circle or beating like that, right? They normally got two set of force. One actually, number one, you got centripetal force, right? But let me ask you a question, huh? When you get swing in a circle, right? Do you feel the force is going upwards or going inward the circle? When let's say like, you know when you're in when you go to like those uh getting Highland theme park, you get swing. Do you feel like you get thrown outwards or you get thrown inwards, actually? You feel, you actually feel the outward force more, right? Exactly. Now, the outward force, it's actually the one I mentioned before. Now, this is a bit out of syllabus, but I let you know so that you, that you understand more. We call this a centrifugal force. Exactly. So, what is stopping the, uh, the, the moon get thrown outwards? What is stopping the moon? Like, phew, fly away. Uh, that is the thing here. You got one more pair here. This is called, called a centrifugal force. Okay. Now the question is very simple. What causes this centripetal force? Who is the one that you know pulling you towards him? Exactly. This is the gravitational force by the earth. You get it? Ah. So when you understand this, there are two of the force. Now I believe I mentioned right, centrifugal force is the reaction force of centripetal force. You know what's of reaction force, right? They are equal, but they're opposite. They are equal, but they're opposite. So Two of these force, they will balance each other, then they stay in the orbit, they keep swinging, swinging, swinging nonstop. That's why these questions, right? You see, one short sentence, but four marks left. You cannot be just expecting, oh, I got gravitational force pulling the moon, end of story. You cannot be what? Right, so you need a better answer than this, actually. So that's why, right, what happened is, mention the point here. Okay, mention the point here. Uh, the idea is this. Okay. Um. Now, first thing first, what do you mention? Now, you can just refer here actually because 
um, copying, I, I give you answer already, my uploader in GC already. I show you this, you look here, I show you the answer. Then you can, uh, you can, you don't, don't need copy on it, afterwards only copy. I show the answer, show you. Okay, I'll wait, wait, wait for a second. I show you the answer. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Did you see my screen now? Did you see my screen now? Got. There we go. Okay. Now here. So the answer is number one. You mentioned now, right? Orbital speed of the moon is always perpendicular to the radius of the orbit. Well, the standard thing you say, all right. So what happened is that now, because uh, I, I mentioned before to you, the centrifugal force is not exactly in the syllabus. Huh? So you cannot mention centrifugal force actually. So that's why you can see they, they answer, they try to say the centrifugal in a very subtle way. All right, orbital speed of the moon causes them to fall out of the orbit because you know they keep trying to get thrown out. This is the centrifugal force idea. Gravitational force on the moon by Earth acts towards the center of the orbit, pulling them towards Therefore, right, the effect of the... Now, this one, uh, the meaning of effect of orbital speed, basically, like, this is what they mean by the centrifugal force. Balanced by the Earth's gravitational force. This is the outward force, centrifugal, balanced by the inward force, centripetal. The centripetal force is actually produced by the Earth's gravitational force. Okay, uh, there we go. So, can we say direction of orbital speed is, uh, is perpendicular? Uh, can again, you can say directions of orbital speed is perpendicular to the radius of orbit. Yep. Ah, uh, there you go. You screenshot this. Uh, I I not gonna wait for you to copy now. Okay. Because uh, I, I I give you answer you until you can refer. Okay. I put you for another five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Come, come. I say. Diagram 5.3 shows the moon orbiting around the Earth. You are required to advise a space traveling agent um, to how to transport a group of space tourists. You know, recently they like to talk about this a lot. We go to Mars and stuff like that. And, it, and you know, actually, this is real already, right? Like possible to do it already, right? Do you know about that? There are companies selling uh, tickets to go to Mars. Yes. No, no, no. You don't go there. You just pass by, have a look, come back. Yeah. How much per ride? Uh, <laughs> of course, it costs a bit. Uh, it costs a bit. Uh, they, they, they didn't do it properly yet because it's already, they already did, did the experiment. They already done the, the test run. It's possible. Um, but they haven't actually launched it yet. Lah. But um, based on the estimation, they were saying it will cost you about 200,000 USD per ride that lasts you about one hour like that. Uh -huh. But well, you get to travel to Mars, fair enough. So, extremely rich, uh, then you can, you got nothing to do, then go, uh, right? You can, I mean, wait, you see, nowadays, uh, you can low key, you can low key flex people, uh, right? Exactly. You like literally uh, uh, say it's like, you've been to Europe, you've been to uh, Africa. How, I mean, very strong, man. I've been to Mars, you know, even though there's nothing there. Uh. Now come. So you need to, well, this is the design essay. La. Literally, you have to write everything on server. There's no table, there's no choosing, okay? So here, um, what you need to do is, you need to ensure one thing. Uh, now, they hint you one, read the question properly, okay? Explain the motivation on the mass of the spacecraft, okay? Launch speed from the Earth, altitude of an orbit around the moon, how to save fuel during the orbiting, and then return to Earth. So what they are doing, you know, it's like that one. Basically, from here, you shoot a rocket and then come back like that. Uh, this is the idea of traveling. Exactly. Orbit, you see, 
a group of space tourists to orbit the moon effectively and then come back safely. So the idea of this, you know, traveling in space uh, is just like that. You launch a rocket from here all the way and then go around the moon, you come back. So while you're orbiting here, then uh, that's the thing. Uh, you basically have a look at the moon and then come back. Uh, that's the thing uh, they're doing. Okay. So how many points we have? How many points we have here? One, two, three, four, five. Now you're lucky because why? Because uh, you better the minor uh, essay, regardless whichever type of essay you need to do. Okay. Whichever, regardless, whichever, whichever type of essay, lah, okay. Because now this one, right, where you have to write everything yourself. This one, I call this as, all right, I would call this as the design essay. Okay, I will call this as a design essay. So for design essay, right, the idea is another one. Um, you, you, anyhow, lah, okay, whatever type, also 10 marks, all right. So design, right, simple. You got no choosing, no, no table for you, then five marks, sorry, 10 marks means. Five times two. So regardless whether they give you how many points, you know, you must you die die must come out five points. So if now this in this case they actually give you him ready, my right? Uh, then you save your problem. You don't have to go through anything although you don't have to go and think yourself. Because sometimes, right, the recent trend uh, for SPM is they like to put the word others. They let you freestyle. It's a good thing for those who study because people always complain, say, hey, not that I didn't study, the thing I study never come out, right? The thing I study you didn't put, right? I cannot write. Never mind. Now they put others. So when they put the word others, right, in a way they are actually more lenient on, you know. Let's say like, by right, you 10 marks, only five points, right? So if they put the word others, they let you freestyle, right? They will, they will prepare about like eight, about eight points for, for in, in the marking scheme. So you manage to hit, you know, either five, you get no marks on. Yep. So give and take. Lah. But of course, some people say, oh, the others, I look at it, I start laughing. I don't even know what to do. I start laughing at the paper and then I know I die already. So give and take. Lah. That's why if you study, then you are okay. Well, here, um, quickly we, we, we mentioned a bit. Like, okay, first thing first, the mass of spacecraft, I think quite easy to mention. Right? What do you think you want? You want the spacecraft to be bigger or smaller? So, uh, smaller or larger, heavier or what? Of course, lighter, better, right? Why lighter, better? Why lighter, better? Because now, number one, you can go faster. Number two is what? When you're smaller, you got smaller, easier to launch. Why is it? Yes, because you got smaller gravity pulling you. You can come out, you can leave the Earth easier. Overcome the gravity easier, correct? Now, next one. What about the launch speed? Inertia cannot. La. Inertia don't relate. La. Hello? Just mention go faster can already. Now, launch speed, of course, the faster the better, right? Yes. And, and actually, la, the better answer is you need to be larger than the escape velocity of the Earth because you want to escape from space, right? Yes. So your launch speed has to be more. Okay. More than escape velocity. You know how much is it? Uh, you don't only memorize extra knowledge only, uh, 11.2 km per second. Yes, per second, not per hour. Exactly. Next one, altitude. Altitude around the moon. When you try to orbit now, when you're orbiting around the moon, what do you think? Like when you're swinging, swinging here, should you go higher, like further away or nearer to the moon? Further, of course. You know why further, right? Now, simple. When you're further away from the moon, you get attracted more or less. Further away, you get attracted less, right? Uh, then you, number one, you don't get sucked towards the moon. Second thing, you see, you need to return to Earth easier, ma. Yes, so when the moon attracts you smaller force, then easier to come back, lah. Right or not? And then next one, how do you save you? As I say, now normally, you want, you can do like that, so you and then boom, orbit, 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 come back. Uh, how do you save you? Throw away the the terrorism, the terrorist. Uh -huh. uh, now you see when you get in, in when you when your rocket fall into the orbit already, you know what happened or not? Do you know what happened? No? Are we lagging? Are we lagging? But the screen is stuck though. No, the internet speed is fine. Can you see my writing? Okay, can you see, never mind. Go on. Right, now, so this one, uh, they orbit, 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 then come back. So actually, uh, when you're orbiting, we can turn off the engine on, you know why or not. 
because when you are in the orbit of the moon, right, then the moon's gravity is going to cause you to orbit itself. You don't need to have to, you don't have to turn on the engine, actually. So to save it, simple. Now, during orbiting, the moon itself has the gravity that, that will attract you and orbit. You don't need to actually turn on the engine yourself anymore. Lastly, how do you return to the Earth? How do you return to the Earth? Yes, you now you orbit, 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 and then you start turn on the engine again, fly towards the earth. When they now actually, you know what happened or not? You don't when we have when we come back, uh, we don't really have the rocket all the way like go inside one. Okay, you go near to the gravity field of the earth, and then you get just you just get and then you just turn on the engine. You let the gravity do the work because if you get too fast, uh, your launching is really good. When, when you land, it will be very, very fast speed. And then, you know, you might have accident and everything. So normally what they do, right? They will turn on the engine like that all the way until here, they turn off the engine, let them orbit, orbit, you know, you take photo, whatever you want. And then after that here, turn on the engine again. Now, once they go into the earth gravity, they stop one. They go, because you know your gravity field, it's, it's like a range, right? Once you drop within the gravity range of the earth, they turn off the engine. They let the gravity do the work and then attract you back to the something like that. Okay? Yep. All right. So here, um, one by one, uh, explain this. Now, by the way, title, you should know, uh, right? Modification also can, design also can. Title, they don't mind, smart one. Uh. Okay, modification also can. Design also can. All right. Marie, you can, you can leave first if you want to. So, reason. Number one, the spacecraft should have smaller mass. All right, why? Because uh, you get smaller gravitational force acting on it, easier to escape from. Okay, and you mean faster is correct, la, but this is a better answer. Ui. All right, uh, can we continue? Okay, come. Expect can. Expect can. All right, let me finish. Uh, launch speed, it should be. Launch speed should be faster as well. All right, why? So that, yep, um, it will it escape the earth. Uh, Easier, All right? You want a faster launch speed? You can go. Uh, you can launch. Sorry, you can escape the earth easier. Or you can say, uh, uh, um, if you don't want escape again, I can say overcome. Overcome the earth's gravitational. Altitude. You want it to be higher. A higher altitude when orbiting the moon. So that your vehicle 
gravitational force acting on the spacecraft by the moon. Easier to escape later. And then uh, how to save you? Lastly, Okay, this is the answer we have. Are you done? Let me know. All right. So, are you done with this? Okay. This one, that one. Next, now number 10, I'll leave it to you. Try doing it yourself. Anyhow, answer, I give it to you already now, right? And actually quite easy one. This one is to, um, this one, the essay lah, is to build the boat. A new boat where you can, you know, uh, go faster and then shape of the size, safety, all kind of thing lah. So this one should be quite easy. It's about travel two lah. A bit of travel three as well, because uh, you need to uh, have more buoyant force as well. Lah. Right, exactly. So um, 11, right? Come, we look at number 11 quickly. Page number 15 here, okay? Diagram 6.1 shows the student use a slide projector to display a large, sharp image of the screen. Well, number one, what is the meaning of focal length? Anybody, definitions, focal length is what? What is the meaning of focal length? One over F, uh, focal length is what? Distance between? Aha, uh -huh. actually, focal length quite easy to understand one. This one, right? Uh, it's what? Distance between the lens and focal point. Focal length, exactly. Hmm. 
Distance between focal point and optical center, are there even matter? All right. Between the center of the lens, sorry, I'm missing out. All right. And the focal point. Next one, based on 6.1, calculate the linear magnification of the image. Well, how do we do that? Now, formula comes. Linear magnification is M equals to, M equals to, now, for magnification, right, you've got two ways, you know, you could either do V over U, or you can either do HI over HO, okay? No, MI, no lah, that one, no. This one is only one lens, you know. The, the, the telescope, microscope, that one later, this one is only one lens, so simple lah. You can either do V over U or HI over HO. Height of image over object or, now V stands for image distance and then U stands for object distance. So here, obviously provided to you, this is the image distance, this is the object distance, right? Now, they say image, so the slide means object. So what you have here is U and then this one is V. Now, bear in mind, whatever you try to measure, okay? Focal length, object distance, image distance, whatever, you always measure from the lens. So from the lens to the image, B, from the lens to the object, U. You know, sometimes what they like to do, they will tell you uh, the whole thing here, the distance between slide and image. That one is not answer because that one is the whole thing already. You only want uh, uh, image to lens and then lens to, to object, separate them, see? Whatever, lah, your starting point from the lens. You get it? Uh -huh. So that's why here, I will do V over U, all right? The V is 60, the U is 20. All right, so answer we got three. Magnification got no units one. It's a ratio only one. And you think about this, uh, CM divide CM, where got unit? Fair enough. Next one, to calculate focal length, do you recall the formulas anyway? Formula is what? One over F equals to one over U plus one over V. Substitute accordingly, you got answer. Lah. Right. Um, what we have here, it's a projector, right? We are using a concave lens. So we substitute everything inside one over. The U is 20 and then V is 60. How much do we get for this? We get uh, 4 over 60, I suppose. Focal length, how much? Yes, 15. Now, these questions, they consider very, very kind to you. You know why or not? Because uh, all these, no positive and negative. Normally, you know where you get tricked about this? Every time when you do these formulas, right? You've got one same problem. Huh? It's always like, you know, the problem is what? You forgot about this one, forgot about this one. Now, how many types of lens do you have? How many types of lens do you have? There's two, which is concave and then convex, right? Concave and then convex. So the problem is, you got two different lens. How do you differentiate them? Exactly. You got positive and negative one, you remember or not? Ah, so this formula, ah, like that, do this one, this question just so happen, everything, they make it simple for you. you everything positive only, nothing wrong, right? Now, listen carefully, okay? Every time you were to use this formula, ah, the one over you, one over me, one over thing, right? Now, listen carefully. You got two different types of lens here. There's concave lens and then there's convex lens, all right? Two types. And then you got three things to determine U and then, uh, sorry, uh, U and then V and then F, right? Now, number one, for U, U is object, ma. U is object, it's very simple, always positive one. You got no virtual object also, one. it's always real, ma. Now, image, right? Then rather different. Why? Because for convex lens, you put positive if the image is real. You put negative if the image is virtual, okay? And then whereas for concave lens, you simply put negative will do, straightforward. Now, what about F? Focal length, also same thing. Concave lens, you put positive. Con sorry, convex lens, you put positive. Concave lens, you put negative. So these questions, you are lucky because why? You literally, everything just so happened are all positive. You don't have to worry anything because they are using convex lens, okay? So convex focal length is already positive, all right? Second thing, they are having a real image. So you also don't have to worry about the plus minus. And how do you know you're having a real image? Because simple, this is a projector image. Image that can be projected for sure, it's a real image. That's why positive. Okay? Uh -huh. So that's why everything positive, positive, positive. You don't have to worry anything. Uh, so this is your lucky part. Lah. But please write this down because this will help you a lot. Every time, uh, this is one thing that you forget in the exam and then you lose smart one. Your teacher likes to trick this a lot. Okay? Uh -huh. Now, next one, calculate power of the lens. How do you calculate power? Formula is? Formula is 1 over F, correct. Uh, formula is 1 over F. 1 over how many? What's your focal length? You calculate on top of my right? What's your focal length? Now, 15. The mark is gone. Number one thing, careless mistake. Why? Yes, every time, right? Now, the rest, I don't care. Here, you want to put CM, go ahead. Nothing wrong. Here, you want to put CM, go ahead. Nothing wrong. But 
for power, right, the focal length here must be 0 0.15. Why? Because it's meter. You understand? Because it's meter. There you go. What's the answer, by the way? 6.67. Wrong. Ah, what's the second problem you do? Second mistake. You need D, correct. Also wrong. What's still missing out? Exactly. Now, power got one thing very, very special is what? In front, you must put positive and negative. Okay. Now, negative, don't worry. Because why? Negative itself, uh, your focal length negative itself, then obviously you're going to put negative, all right? But listen, uh, if it's a, you see, if it's a concave, sorry, convex lens, your focal length positive, your power has to be positive. If it's a concave lens, your focal length negative, your power also follow negative. So, Concave, uh, don't worry on uh, because why? Concave, uh, your, your focal length itself is negative already. Uh, then you know for sure negative. Uh, but even for positive, must write a plus in front. This thing minus mark one. Yes, they will minus your mark. So pay attention. Exactly. The positive here, you know what does it mean or not? This one is trying to remind you that, I mean, this is to tell uh, I'm using a convex lens. Okay. Uh, one of the examples for you, uh, have you done the uh, eye test before? You know, those kind of um, spectacle store, they normally have one. They let you do like free tests like that. When you look at the balloon one. After you're done, right, they'll print a receipt for you. They will print a receipt for you to show your eye for which one got, 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 got like, you know, short sectors, long sectors thing. Uh, have you seen, have you looked into the receipt before? The, that, that thing got plus minus one right now. Ah, ah, there you go, same idea here. They're telling you your eyeball, it's a short sectors or long sectors. Ah, so that's why, no matter what, ah, power must write plus or minus in front. Positive or convex lens, negative or concave lens. You got it? There we go. Next one, why a piece of paper burns? Hey, not bumps, wrong typing. Burns. Burns. Okay. Uh, place under a convex lens, aim towards a hot sun. Now, first thing first, what's a convex lens again? What does a convex lens do? Does it focus or does it diverge? Convex lens is, yes. Now, I mean, just now, question five, you did more right now. The light ray all focus to 1.1. Converge, correct. Ah. So, when you converge, what happened? Now, simple. You know what's a convex lens, by the way? It's your magnifying glass, in case you don't notice. It's your magnifying glass, exactly. So, what happened is that all the light will go to the magnifying glass and then they go to 1.1. 1 .1, huh? Do you do that when you're a kid? Try to burn, like, you know, uh, those dry leaves and stuff like that. Ah, there you go, see? Convex lens. Light ray come. So they go like pew all the way here. Pew, 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 pew. Go to one particular point. And at this point, what happened? Heat up on fire. What point is this, by the way? Where the light ray go to this point. What do you this point? They are converged. They are focused. Converge means focus, correct? Focus to where? Focus to exactly focal point. Okay. So that's why over here, what happened is number one, you say, right? Uh, the parallel sun light. What happened? The parallel sun light. What happened? Travel to the convex lens and converged to the focal point of the lens. All right. Second, the light. Is all focus at focal point causes the light energy to increase greatly. The light energy converts to heat energy and the temperature of the paper rises quickly. Therefore, the paper will start burning when the temperature gets too high. There you go. And again. Gets high enough, lah. Gets when the temperature gets high. 
Then they start burning. Okay, can we go on to the last part? All right, come, question D. Here, scientists so looking through a microscope to examine it, the small specimens. You need to determine the most suitable microscope, the best microscope. Now, which one do we choose? Now, first thing first, right, you see, uh, all these things, when it comes to microscope, telescope, right, there are things that you must know and you cannot just, or can I just based on my understanding or common sense, no, you cannot. These are specific things, like you must know exactly, do you want the eyepiece power to be larger or objective larger? And then you want the distance between two lenses, how? All kind of thing, right? Everything must be done. Now, of course, speaking of compound lenses, we got two types, we got microscope, we got telescope, right? I'll teach you a simple trick, lah, okay? Number one is, you see, for microscope, right, your power of objective has to be larger than eyepiece. Now, these are the things that you need to memorize one, you know, because, you know, they, 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 you need these to go on one. Yes, the setup is important, you must know, okay? And then, of course, telescope rather different, think about it, okay? So, again, uh, as I said, we've got two different type of compound lenses. One is telescope, one is microscope, okay? So, for telescope, right, how the power of eyepiece has to be larger than objective. And for microscope, the power of objective is larger than eyepiece. You see that? Uh, then, of course, you say, hey, how do you know? Like, you know, Takan, you ask me just blindly memorize, right? One simple trick for you, right? Look at the telescope. Word. Simple as this. You go and count the letter. Exactly. Now, look at the, let uh, the word telescope. Letter E is more or letter O is more. Telescope. Where do, which one do we got more? Exactly one, two, three. See that? Uh -huh. So that's why E more than O. And, and no, it works. You know, if, if it's work, it's not, it's not stupid, right? One, two, microscope. You got more O than E, right? Uh, there you go. PO bigger than PE. Simple line, right? But of course, exam, you cannot say because telescope, I want, part, well, I want PE to be larger so that, you know, because I count the E, right? For reason one. I don't want to count, I'll show you later, okay? But in this case, la, this one here, why? Because you can use this small trick here to remind yourself. You count the E, you count the O, simple, simple, okay? Ah. Now, next thing is, for telescope, right? The second point you must know uh, is that the distance between the lens, okay? Uh, between your two lenses, right? It's FO plus FE. Yes, the, the distance between two lenses must be focal length of objective plus eyepiece. Whereas for microscope, right? It will be L more than FO plus FE. Okay, this one you somehow, this one you remember need to memorize a bit. Lah. Yep, but you can also, I mean, how I remember, uh, I just remember one. Because normally you confuse between the equal and more than one. So I remember, you know, when I see T, I remind yourself the telescope must be FO plus FE. Ah. And then for microscope, then the other way around, I mean, just more than one. Ah, that's it. Okay, now come. So based on this, what can you say? We are dealing with a microscope. So what do you need to do? Microscope. Uh, first thing first, eyepiece uh, power should be larger or objective should be larger? Which one? Well, I teach you already, my right? Microscope, your objective should be larger than eyepiece, right? So what you do? You choose eyepiece, smaller, better. And objective, right? Bigger, better. Distance between two lenses, I gave you already, my right? Must be more than FO plus FE. And then lastly, the position of the specimen needs to be in between FO and 2FO. Now, this one I explain later. So, answer must be S. Okay. Now, uh, explanation, the full explanations I give you answer already, you can refer. But I roughly to tell you. Lah. Now, what do you say? Uh, the, the eyepiece objective, right? How do you explain? You cannot just say because microscope got more O, Mara. Right? How do you explain this? Simple. Now, let me ask you a very simple question. Power equals to, power equals to 1 over F, agree? Power equals to one over focal length, right? Now, what is the relationship between power and focal length? What is the relationship between power and focal length? Uh -huh. Now, let's say the power is smaller. That means focal length is longer. The Bali one, right? Uh, exactly. So why do you want... Now, first thing first, when you talk about eyepiece, uh, smaller meaning what? 
IP smaller means what? The FO, sorry, FE how? If your power is smaller, what happened to your FE? FE is, yes, they are supposed to be longer, right? Focal length of IP is longer, right? Uh, this one, uh, so this one, power of IP is smaller. That's why FE longer. Later, I explain to you why. Uh. Now, moving on. What about this one here? Objectives, lens. You want the PO, you choose bigger, right? Then that means what? Your FO is smaller. Now, ultimately, these two is combo together. Right? Why? Because to calculate magnifications of telescope, right? We normally do. Now, for telescope, right? You do MO multiplied by ME. Or, all right? Or you do H of I2 over H of object. Uh, so with that, right, when you have this kind of combinations, they will result in greater magnifications. Yes, they will result in greater magnifications. So that one after that, all the, all the max afterwards. Uh, okay. But the idea is, this is your explanation. Later, really, right, what you say, uh, now here, that's why you don't have to say, uh, because I counted more E or whatever, no. So on this side, right, you put choice. On the other side, you put explanation. Reason also can. So first thing first, you tell them the IP's power should be smaller than your reason literally so that the focal length of IP's is longer. That's it. More than enough. You can stop here already. Uh, that's the thing. Uh, exactly. So you don't have to say too much. Right? You don't have to say, oh, then why so? That's it. You literally just translate this. Okay. Now, same thing here. You mentioned the uh, objective lens power should be bigger. All right. So that the focal length of the objective lens is shorter. Now, two of them combined together, they will result in one thing is that your magnification will turn out to be larger. Yep, something like that. Hmm. And then one more, you could mention the distance between two lenses. More than FO plus FE. Why? Now, this to do this right for two reasons. Uh, number one is because. Uh, you will have a bigger or more magnified image form. And also the image form will become clearer. This one is mainly a technical answer lah, because you have to really, you know, learn how to set up this thing and then you really have to learn how to draw one. So I cannot just uh, uh, show you one shot. Lah. I mean, this is a big, big part here. That's why a bit of thing that you have to go through this. Microscope telescope is a very technical thing. So uh, why does it become sharper? Because when you arrange this way, your light ray, the one based on drawing one, so you must know how to draw microscope. So they will focus at a point where you need it. That's why they are sharper. And then also the main lead is that your image form is larger. Bigger magnification, larger magnification also. Now one last thing is this one. Your object needs to be in between FO and 2FO. The reason, now later I tell you, uh, object should be in between FO and 2FO. And the reason, very simple, is because so that to produce a real and magnified image. Now, do you recall the shortcut I teach you before? The idea is like that, uh, you see, you got two lens, right? So what happened is that the one you're looking at, it's eyepiece, the one that, you know, you put object, this one is objective, okay? So you need your first image to form somewhere around where you can project to the second one. Means you want the first image to go, the first image go through the first lens and then after that, go to the second lens. In order to go to the second lens, you need to have a real image to project it because you see, if you form a virtual image, you know, it's a virtual image or not. 
virtual image means the image that do not get projected out. So basically, then your drawing stop here. There's no more next part already. Uh -huh. If you want to learn more about the drawings, uh, uh, you can go to my YouTube channel one because uh, I I I because I know that uh, the typical drawing you got this problem. Right? So you refer that one, then you understand what I mean. Right? Exactly. So this one, right? As much as there's no drawing required, but when you learn the drawing, all these things become much simpler. Exactly. Okay. Uh -huh. The drawing itself, lah. Uh, you can refer to my YouTube. I, I purposely put a video there to make you, to make sure you know how to draw. Right. Uh huh. Yep. And finally, you can say lah. Uh, Therefore, the most suitable microscope should be S because uh, just recopy whatever you say there. Literally just copy everything and there you go. Okay. All right. Any questions you'd like to ask? Okay. The position of specimen, the one is because I uh, see. Um, now I might uh, I can show you quickly. You can look here. So idea is like that. See, um, this let's say lah, we talk about one lens only lah, Okay, this one right. You can you can you can write this also. It's a very simple shortcut for you. Whenever you have a convex lens, okay. So you got two point one mile, right. You got focal point. All right. You got focal point, and then you got two f here. So actually, uh, you can use this two point to remember all your characteristics. Huh? Yes, now 2F is for you to remember the size. So if you put your object here exactly on 2F, then the image turns out to be uh, uh, turns out to be same size. Huh? Yes. And then right, if you have object placed here like more than 2F, all right, more than 2F, then your image will be smaller. Because why? Simple uh, you put two, you put further away from the lens. Huh? Uh -huh. Then on the other side here. This part, then this one you will get a magnified image, a larger version. Yes, uh, first thing first, you can use this to remember all your sizes. This thing only works for converging, uh, as in what convex lens or concave mirror. Okay, converging only. Diverging only one. Diverging is what concave lens and convex mirror. Both of them, right? They only produces one type of image, which is diminished virtual upright. Okay. Now this one here, the F, uh, it's for you to determine whether your image, is it real or virtual. Now anything on focal point or less than focal point, you will produce a virtual image. Okay, anything more than focal point, all this, uh, it will be real. And then remember, just now I said, right? Real image normally packaged with inverted. Virtual image normally packaged with upright image. Now remember what I said, right? When you got two lenses, you need the you need to your object uh, need to pass by the first objective lens and then project to the next eyepiece. Then only can have the image form. You want to make sure you got something to go to eyepiece one. You want to make sure you go through first lens already. They got something to project to the second lens. And in order to do that, you need something to project my right. That's why you want the real image. To do real image, you must put your object here. And this is a microscope. What do you want? You want the image to be bigger or smaller? Magnify, right? Uh, you see, if you circle up now, you see you can only want, you have one specific region where it gives you magnified image. It also gives you a real image. Exactly. So this is why you must place between F and 2F. Uh -huh. Then you get a magnified and then real image. Uh -huh. Image will become larger. This one is based on drawing. You need to go through, you have to try drawing and you understand what happened. Yep. Okay. So go through the drawing. Okay, uh, any other questions you'd like to ask? I hope you learn a lot today and uh, good luck for exam. Bye bye.